Hello, everybody. Glad to be here with you guys for a special edition of Do Your Own Research with Rue and, of course, Max. Um, I'm telling you flat out, I couldn't believe it when Rue messaged me earlier today. He's like, hey, man, you're not going to believe this. I, I have a Jasmine Swift connection. I was like, wait, what? Did I read that right? And then, you know, saw what he linked me up with. And then I went down the rabbit hole as well. I'm telling you guys flat out, man, this is going to be an awesome show. And it's not fluff. You know, actually showing you guys some of the real connections. And I was blown away. Absolutely blown away. Guys, smash a like for this program. Currently speaking, we have um, on YouTube 22 likes, 28 people watching on YouTube. I know more people filter in. And, of course, uh, some people on X. So, guys, the algorithm obviously works when you when you hit it doesn't cost you anything. Last night was the biggest show we ever had. 900 on the live. Are you kidding me? So without further ado, Rue, how you doing tonight? Pretty good, bro. Like I was saying backstage, it is my birthday. So um, I'm chilling. Uh, took the day off. Um, yeah, very, very happy. Um, and when I found these connections, I was even happier. <laughs> happier that I got my uh, Swift bags pack. And um you know, it really, it really, really um, looks clear to me that uh, Swift is going to connect all the Draper um, funds, all the Draper um, blockchains. And when I found this Japanese connection, I'm like, okay, okay, so maybe Jasmine is connected too. And there are definitely some connections there. Yeah. Well, by the way, happy birthday once again. And uh, you know what? You have one thing in common with tokenizer and that is you guys both are doing research right on your birthday yeah man never never stops over here man you got to get to uh the bag as they say <laughs> i'm not um you know i, I have a certain place that i want to be financially you know i have children so like you know hey we we, we're, we never close there you go we're gonna welcome some of you guys from the community um, let's start off with the first comments and let's see here. It is going to start off with the one and only Tim Shea, who says, Hey, and sprays from far away. Having everybody hit the DECK, the mayor of crypto, crypto commissioner, represent the what 589 up, district. Yes, you know how it goes. He is the crypto commissioner, mayor of crypto. Thank you for being here, Tim Shea. All right. Let's also welcome Sangstar Video Presentations, Truth Researchers. I have some Sangstar on my PlayStation 3. You don't want to see Maximus on the karaoke, all right? It, it's pretty brutal. Um, literally sound like uh, Adam Sam Adam Sandler um, trying to do you know an Axel Rose impersonation over November Rain. That's what I've been told. They're like, you sound exactly like Adam Sandler. And I'm like, do I really? And then I replayed it and I was like, holy cow, it was unintentional. And that's what ended up happening. Anyway, Lord of the Realms says, good evening, everyone. My favorite shell is the bomb variety. Hit me with all you got. Thanks, man. Uh, let's also welcome X marks the spot. I know you just came over from Rob stream, crypto future 99. Also support your fellow brother, Rob. We will have a show tomorrow. It is at 1 PM central. Again, you know, do the, time zone thing for wherever you're at uh it's, it's tomorrow it's the uh it's like the jasmine round table there's going to be jesse kir finance myself obviously rob i think um a couple others i have to remember who else who else is there i think there's some um other people ambassadors and so on um very good to get with some of these guys we're going to talk about the roadmap 2024 obviously a little bit more about panasonic um i give you guys a taste earlier and so it's going to be a good show. All right, let's go further down. Um, Derek, welcome back. Welcome back. Glad to have you. And three, two, one. Yes, yes, yes. Let's also welcome back Crypto Homes Triple Seven in the house. We also have Guy, or maybe it's a G. Uh, it says, "Yeah." All right, thanks, man. What's up, G? Oh, is this guy from your community? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, All G? Right. He, uh, he's been dropping some really nice uh, info about uh, Swift in my comments. Just wanted to recognize him there. Well, you're Detroit. He's the G. And everybody else is the new kid on the block about to get smacked back to the boondocks, right? Anyway. Nice. Okay. Max got bars over here. <laughs> I don't know why we always do that while you're on the show. Anyway. 
Um, Haroon, hello everyone. Let's go, Max. Let's go, let's go. Glad to have you back, Haroon. Heath Overledger, Redman, Redman. Um, you know, I've been called Filipino Ice Cube before. Maybe they're referring to you. So Filipino Ice Cube and know. Redman, apparently. I don't know. It's all good. <laughs> um that's good stuff uh gee oh that's right red man the sample you guys recognize it that's right time for some act yep it was oh got it yep and the nice part was it doesn't get flagged on the copyright because it was sampled from a mike tyson fight right so nice yeah otherwise it would get flagged if it was the original sample from red man great catch you guys know your hip-hop that's awesome i was at first i was like what are you talking about you know talking about rue obviously i'm talking about me but anyway um 3k sports welcome welcome hi max and family mr x gamer you guys rock thanks for being here uh i want to point this out from henry brown he gifted one maximus crypto membership who was the lucky winner of the day before we get into it it was to sophie r uh congratulations the very very cool stuff and then i just want to welcome a few more of you guys um we have marie villas is in the house um mandolin bondo uh kind of like um Engelbert Humperdinck back in the day with your Quando Quando Quando. I got on Jasmine in November, just didn't buy enough. Wish I bought more than, but anyway, I still buy it now. Jasmine is Japan's Bitcoin. Very cool stuff. Um, all right, Cool Cat Coding is in the house. It was Cool Cat Crypto. Welcome back. We have a $5 super chat from the one and only Henry Brown. And um, let's get back into that. Let's recognize that real quick. Uh, thank you, Brother Henry. He says, Bow Wow, Yippee Yo, Yippee Tim Dog in the house. Bow Wow, Yippee Yo, Yippee Yay, Death Row in the house. Brian Dowie, everybody, thank you so much. Yes, thank you for joining us on this Friday night. Um, cool stuff, right? Uh, Jasmine needs to get off Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum is junk. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of why they're scaling up. So, you know, that's the whole point of roll ups. So um you have junction you have the whole thing of you know ai blockchain and so on it's going to be a lot better than i would agree uh garbage ethereum all right so let's also welcome elon muff apparently dip metaverse laughs every time he sees your name which is hilarious um shout out to brother dip and michael montclair in the house all right so a lot of other people to welcome mr lambos baby g so many people right can't get into all of it um but yes, without further ado, I don't have a Swift coin uh, one on the screen. But you know what? We can definitely put up uh, the one for Jasmine, okay? Because it's a combination of Swift coin slash Jasmine. So, brother, what you got? All right, guys. So let's start. Let's start here with this Medium article. Uh, let me share my screen. Share screen. Let's see. I'll do the window. Just one more advisory, guys. If you just tuned in, smash the like. It does trigger the algorithm. We do appreciate you guys. We recognize it's Good Friday. Maybe have some, you know attendance issues and it's okay all right so you got that let me just go ahead and actually remove a couple things uh from my end so it shows up a little bit better sure. and okay there we go take it away sir all right so you can see here the establishment of swift japan okay uh this is from a while back 2018 but what we see here is swift some japanese letters and these eight or these six things here. Now, um, these, I believe they're family crests. Um, come a couple of my guys have done some research on it. Uh, shout out to Shook Focus. He has a really good video on this, which we're going to watch um, some clips from, okay? But if anybody's Japanese out there and they know what this first part means here in the Japanese letters, please let us know. And if anybody knows these family crests, uh, one of which we're going to get into is the Maori family crest, which is the one with the three dots there that looks like um, what um, like something from Naruto. Um, check check that out. We're going to get into the Maori family crest a little later. 
But if you come down here, which it's not quite allowing me to here, you can see that they have a partnership with Mizuho Bank, okay? Um, Mizuho Bank, and there's a little blurb, which we'll read right now. Mizuho Bank is the um, integrated retail and corporate banking unit of Mizuho um, Financial Group, one of the largest financial services companies in Japan. With a total assets approximately $1.64 trillion in 2014, Mitsuo Bank has over 505 branches and offices in Japan and over 36 other countries and territories. It's the only bank in, uh, to have branches in every prefecture of Japan. Okay, Swift team met with president of Tokyo branch and introduced him with Swift's business model and roadmap representatives of Mizuho Bank demonstrated great interest in blockchain technology and the idea of Swift's transfer agreement. The president of Muzuho Bank um, in Tokyo appreciated the business model of Swift and promoted um, in-depth discussion about Swift's technology and future cooperations with the Swift team. Okay. So really, really cool here. And here we go. Um, on January 19th, um, 2028, uh, the SWIFT team was invited to attend the Chinese Chamber of Commerce uh, Spring Festival in Japan and Tokyo. During the meeting, SWIFT team discussed future cooperation opportunities with many brokerages and investment institutions in Tokyo looking for business development applications besides SWIFT's platform. We're looking forward to uh, future performance of SWIFT and SWIFT coin. Okay, so... There, there, that is, that's just, that's just huge information, right? Um, but uh, Swift, or I'm sorry, Shook Focus has found some extra information, which we'll go over in just a second. So I was wondering there, um, is there any connection to Jasmine? So I was looking at some information here, which I'm going to have to share that. Let me just make sure I got the right window that I'm going to share that on. Okay. Is this the one? I think this is it here. I want to share. Okay. Yep. So let me go share that. Uh, present stop screen. Present share screen. As a tab, yeah. Yeah, as a tab, yep. Uh, share. Okay. So I'm going to add it for you. Just a second. There you go. Okay. So this specific article is talking about how Jasmine like, went up, right? Regulatory uh, wins propel Jasmine coin as Japan's uh, crypto revolution ignites, okay? And this is from February 22nd, uh, 2024. And if we go down here, we'll see, furthermore, the connection between Jasmine and DWF Labs, known for its influence on cryptocurrency of valuations, has only amplified the positive mar market sentiment. The bullish outlook is further boistered by predictions from uh, influential analysts like the Wolf of Meme Street project projecting a target price of 30 cents for Jasmine. But highlighted by demand from Japanese future capitalists, blah, blah, blah. But the connection here is the DWF labs, okay? And I thought, okay, let's see if there's any DWF labs connection to Draper uh, Dragons, which is Tim Draper. And we went how, into deep how Tim Draper is connected to Swift. Um, he's on their homepage and all of that, right? So um, the Draper Dragons is basically uh, Draper's Chinese arm of his uh, venture capital um, organization. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at um, DWF Labs, which I gotta pull up here. Let me see. Let me make sure I have it open. Okay, yeah, I do. So let me come back. Boom, 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 boom. And we're gonna stop share and come back up here with. DWF Labs. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
Bear with me. Got a lot of tabs open here. It's okay. Uh, uh, Actually, while you're pulling that up, um, okay. I want to recognize a super chat that I did see coming through. Um, so that way that person doesn't have to wait as long. Sure. Uh, by the way, uh, shout out to, um, I think I, I saw Uncle Thursday in the, in here. So welcome. Glad to have you. Um, the super chat came from Henry Brown. He says, just heard Michael Montclair, new jazz song on the 94.7, The Wave. Don't forget about us when you collaborate with Herbie Hancock. Wow. Well, shout out to Michael Montclair. Welcome, welcome. And also Patrick Collier. But yes, thank you again to, for the $5 Super Chat. Um, really do appreciate it. Patrick, welcome, welcome. And let's go ahead and continue the coverage. Here it is. Take it away. So this is DWF Labs portfolio. So you'll notice in their portfolio, they have Tron, um, Algorand, Conflux, um, and keep these guys in mind because we've mentioned them before with Draper, but we'll go back over them again. Um, so sp specifically those three, right? Um, of course, we got synthetics um, and Celo. Uh, one of the things you might not know about Celo is um, Swift Labs, former um, co-founder, actually went on to move over to Celo as their um, chief technical officer for two years. So there's a connection there as well. But specifically with Tron, Algorand, and Conflux, there's a connection with um, this organization called the Blockchain Infrastructure Alliance. And we're going to share those guys here coming up. Go back here. And stop and share. Okay, and share. So we're going to show you a little bit later here where the block blockchain infrastructure alliance is kind of founded by the Draper Dragons. Okay, now what you're going to notice about the blockchain infrastructure alliance. The founding members of this alliance are those companies we just kind of mentioned there. Um, whoops, I went a little bit too far. Algorand, Conflux. Okay, Algorand and Conflux, right? Um, which makes sense because it's it seems like it's slanted to the BRICS nations, uh, Chinese, Japanese, the Asian side of the world, right? Um, you can see that with Alchemy Pay, Iotex, Neo, Conflux, and Algorand, right? So um, there's a connection with multiple different companies here. And let's just remind you of where the Blockchain Infrastructure Alliance comes in, because I'd never heard of these guys until I did the research on Draper and what he was doing. Um, but yeah, let's 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 show you again where the these guys come in. Let me make sure I have that that part up as well. While you're pulling that up, guys, I just want to say this is Rue. He is here tonight, and you know he can be followed over on YouTube over at Black Rue B L A C K R U E, and then on top of that. Same type of thing on X at Black Rue. It's his birthday. So you know what? If you appreciate the content and are glad to have him or special guest here, again, just smash the like. All we ask is free. doesn't cost you anything. 70 people watching on YouTube, 49 likes. Let's try to get the likes up. It really does help the algorithm. Back to you, my friend. I know you're pulling that up. There it is. All right. Okay, here we are. So... Here we are. So we shared this once before with um, Draper when we were talking about Tim Draper, but I just want to make sure you guys got it. Let's, let's scroll down here. So here we are. 
So um, the Blockchain Infrastructure Alliance, whose members, and this, this specific news article says, is basically showing that the um, Blockchain Infrastructure Alliance invested in Gemini. And really, the Blockchain Infrastructure Alliance is basically founded and funded by the Japer Dragons, which we're going to see here at the end of this paragraph. Um, Blockchain Infrastructure Alliance, whose members include Polygon, Avalanche, Alchemy Pay, Near, and Algorand, as we just saw, right, um, has announced a strategic investment in Gemini, one of the world's largest and most trusted exchanges. The BIA and Gemini share a common vision for a decentralized cryptocurrency as the basis of positive innovation in the world, and this investment represents the first time the two have come together. Uh, BIA's investment in Gemini has done has been done via Draper Dragon, okay? A BIA member and venture capital fund co-founded and uh, co-found, co uh, co-founded by the renowned crypto investor and advocate, Tim Draper, okay? So right there, right? So we basically connected that uh, D, D, F, uh, D, F, D, W, F, excuse me, D, W, F, and uh, the Draper Dragons have a lot of interconnection with these different crypto companies, right? Um, and we just saw Mizuho um, has a connection to uh, Swift <clears throat> via um, what I showed you in the Medium article. And then now I'm going to show you um, what my friend uh, Shook Focus. Definitely go over it and take a um, take a. Uh, join um, Shook Focus's YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to emphasize two things that he found. One uh, about Mizuho and Swift, and another about this um, that family, those family crests that we saw. Okay, and we're going to watch a video. Um, so we're going to watch a couple different parts of this video, but I think it's going to be kind of mind blowing. So let's get that up as well. Stop screen and share. Yeah, as long as you share as a tab, uh, the audio should play okay. All right, okay. there we go. Gotcha. Okay, I'm sharing as a tab. It's taking a little while to load up here for whatever reason. Yeah, you're having some connection issues, I noticed tonight. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Um, okay, so let's before you we want, share, you, can, like, you can drop if you want. Um, let's see here. Uh, let me zoom in real quick. So you're at the sixteen eighteen mark, and then you want to play that to where at the end? Well, uh, I want to start here at a certain plot point. It's taking yeah. a little while to load for whatever reason. Yeah, just double check here, your tabs. You never know; you might have some kind of plan for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, let me close some things here. You know what it is, right? Us peasants out here in Northwest Phoenix got a little bit better. In the internet wealth and money area of your home is believed to attract financial prosperity. There it is. I just had to close some stuff, I guess. Let me close. Uh, no one. problem. Yeah, yeah, let no problem. Close. And what else are we going to close? Let me close that and let me close that. Okay, now we should be rolling, but let me go to a specific. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, if you get full screen too, that, that helps too. Okay, let me. Uh... And let me, okay, so this should be the part. We're gonna go, about to go full screen, but let's go ahead and make it a little bit faster. Actually, you if know what? Can. Don't do that. Don't. You know how many darn complain? Yeah, you know how many people I got complaining about that. I'm cool with it. I'm all about. Really? Yeah, I'm. I'm with you on that. Bro, I, I can't least... watch videos at normal speed. <laughs> but okay, I won't. I won't. I won't make it faster than I yeah, can't watch them I'm at sorry. normal speed. Yeah, I don't I have had, enough time I, I in the day, so, bro. I know. I know. I'm with you on that. But th <laughs> there's some people that are like, it's too fast. I was like, oh my god, really. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. So we'll watch it normal speed then. And uh, uh, I want to hear this. 
Uh, this but you know what? How about this? Forget that. It's your birthday. You play it wherever speed you want to play it. How about that? You know what? You're a person. Freaking play double speed. <laughs> we'll Freaking, do one point yeah. two five speed. All right, at all least. right. And then here we go. And shout out to Shook Focus. Definitely go over to his channel. Um, but let's play. And, and again, if you guys have any information on any of these other crests, I would really love to know that succulents are often directly associated with water and aquatic symbolism. I would say the succulent fits well into the story being told here. And now we move on to what might be one of, if not the most interesting symbol included here, the Mori clan. I don't think it's possible for me to give it proper justice in this video. Now I have seen it spelled both ways, with the U and without, but from what I can tell, they reference the same history. The Mori clan was a Japanese samurai clan descended from Oi no Korimoto. The most illustrious member, Mori Motonari, significantly expanded the clan's power in Aki province. During the Edo period, Mori's descendants became the feudal lords of the Chosu domain under the Tokugawa shogunate. After the Meiji Restoration, with the abolition of the Han system and daimyo, the Mori clan became part of the new nobility. Now, Little research, go do if you want to, but there will be a link to a video about the Mori clan in the description. In terms of modern wealth, the Mori family is still influential, but specific details about their current financial status are not widely available. Historically, they were prominent landowners and wielded significant power, but their wealth today may not be as pronounced as it once was. The Mori clan's legacy remains rooted in their historical achievements and contributions to Japanese history. Now, the mention of prominent landowners is one of the reasons I had to take a look into our first candidate here. I introduce to you Akira Mori, son of deceased real estate tycoon Taiki Chiro Mori. In 2017, it was said that Akira Mori and family had a net worth of $7.6 billion as rated by Forbes. A look at the Forbes Japan Top 50 saw that decrease to $2.7 billion in 2023, but has since gone back up to $3.6 billion in 2024, according to the real-time tracker. While the field of land and real estate doesn't prove direct relation or dissensionship to the samurais of old, when looking into Mori clan wealth, you can't help but come across this family. You might be thinking, but this is SwiftCoin, right? Smart worldwide financial tech, not real estate on blockchain. And you would be correct, although before moving on, I invite you to take a look at this write-up from Ember Pro, a business solutions provider. As they infer about how Mori Trust Hotel Real Estate Investment Trust could benefit from blockchain-based supply chain management. According to technology experts in the real estate operations industry, Mori Trust Hotel Real Estate Investment Trust can use the blockchain network technology to overcome incompatible management information systems across various players in the supply chain management to establish a shared truth. Given the mention of blockchain as a real world solution, we had to look into this. Now, for a more intriguing mention of the Mori name, how about Kazu Takamori, head FinTech and ICO team? Let's take a look at his profile and expertise. After admission to the bar in Japan, Mr. Mori gained experience at various law firms for about six years, including Mercury General in Osaka, which mainly deals with mergers and acquisitions and corporate law practice. Then he became head of Japan desk in Singapore. Now, that's not highlighted, but it is important. Take a look at the description of Japan desk as once described by Evelyn Grace Sarongon, a senior vice president and managing director. The Japan Desk addresses the need to grow and adapt business changes and trends brought about by globalization. So we got law, we got globalization, let's continue. Now, based in Singapore, Mr. Mori specializes in Asian legal affairs and provides legal services on matters such as cross-border mergers and acquisitions and business expansion into the Asian region. In recent years, Mr. Mori has been more involved in projects concerning advisory services for cutting-edge business like fintech, I promise we're coming back to that. Let me heat up a little bit here. Let me heat up. <clears throat> in particular, he is receiving an increasing number of inquiries about matters relating to cryptocurrencies in Asian region. He provides advice on regulatory matters for the establishment of cryptocurrency exchange in the Association of Southeast Asian Nation Countries and liaises with local government authorities. 
He is also, <laughs> whoa, he also assists in structuring the ICO in compliance with regulations of relevant countries, reviewing white papers, drafting documents such as simple agreement for future tokens and terms of service based on the applicable laws of relevant countries and providing legal opinions on ICO projects. Okay, so now oh, that's that's one I part believe- we wanted to hit on his video. So again, so now we see um, with that with that picture that we got there, there are probably Japanese noble or high ranking um, families that are related to Swift. Okay, and uh, Shook went and found that the Moris um, are represented by that uh, one family crest you saw with the line over it and the three dots. Okay. Now, uh, what he also found was some very, um, some very particular wording from a Zuho bank, which we're gonna, um, which we're gonna um, look at right now. And I re- very much encourage you guys. There's so much many more nuggets in this video than what I'm just showing. So definitely come over and check them out. It should focus digital. Uh, we're gonna start here at the. At like the 15. I just want to state to you guys, thank you so much for helping the algorithm. Um, I didn't notice we're now at 181. Let's try to get to 200. I really appreciate you guys on this good Friday. And thank you to the one and only Black Rue, Rue Black, who's in the house tonight on his birthday. So happy birthday again to Rue. Let's go ahead and kick it into a little bit more of what he has in regards to these connections. Jasmine Swift Coin. I know it sounds crazy, guys. But I'm telling you flat out, we got something solid for you guys tonight. Back to you. And here we go. These whole bank had approximately 32 billion in revenue in 2023. That's cool. But what makes Mizuho Bank so interesting? Well, take a look at one of the services offered by Mizuho Bank. Swift Connectivity Services. Now let's read the definition. We provide innovative and leading payment solutions for corporate clients globally via SWIFT network. Our SWIFT connectivity services enable corporate clients to achieve operation integration and security enhancement with one stop, one stop payment reconciliation. So Shik only only touches on that for a little bit, but that one stop to me is very, very important. Very important. If you go back here just a second here and you look at the way that they wrote this, okay, um, they use Swift, but they, they they include the I. But I think that's just honestly, I think that is either a typo or they're trying to purposely have people off a little bit. But you can see here um, it says our Swift connectivity services enable corporate clients to achieve operation, integration, and security enhancement with one-stop payment and reconciliation. One stop, okay? Um, And if you go to what he showed with Swift, from their their site, it says one-stop cross-chain wallet exchange and payments app, okay? and then Great catch, Rue. Great catch, man. This this is all shook. This is all shook. what that one stop is extremely, extremely important there, guys. And Shook later goes on to say how this is different from Swift because of the Swift, and by Swift, I mean the uh protocol for the clearinghouse. Um, the clearinghouse does not say that they have one stop stuff, this is completely just Swift blockchain. Okay, so this is very, very important. Um, so to me, that's even a stronger connection to Mizuho Bank than what the Swiss medium article showed. Okay. Um, so to me, that's, that's the big bomb right there. And if we go to back here to this available services, one of the things you'll note down here um, that Swift did not, that uh, Shook did not mention is ISO 20022 standards as well. So my goodness. Pretty, wow. pretty, pretty huge. Okay, that is it, huge. I agree. Wow. So, um, that's that's all I wanted to mention. Other than this one thing, if we go and I come out here, uh, let me go back. 
So shout out, shout out to Shook Focus for that. Me. Uh... Does he have a channel or is he on? X yes, he or... does. Okay. Yes, he does. Uh, let me. I'll share it to you right here. We always want to recognize other people that are part of our, you know, research community. Absolutely. So nice catch by him with the one stop there. Um, and let's go. Um, stop. Just one second. Um, guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this directly into the comments for you. And here's the channel. Please give him a follow. If anything, I'll try to um, share it on your screen or on the screen real quick, I should say. Um, yeah, so here we go. This is, love the name, by the way. Reminds me of like Mob Deep. Yeah, you know? and that's where I think he got it from, too. Yeah, you know, they shook because ain't no such things as halfway crooks. Ain't no such things as halfway researchers, right? Scared Classic, the looks. Bro. Right, you know? Scared to look at the fluff or whatever. <laughs> I don't know how it goes. Anyway, um, actually, you got to get that crypto single, that crypto LP out, bro. <laughs> yeah, I really need to hook up with Henry Brown. It's something that we were working on in the past, and it's just uh, time constraints and stuff. But I had never forgotten Henry for listening. I never forgot. We do need to get that going on. But anyway, yeah, guys, look at this. Just full screen this real quick for, um, you know, our, our fellow brother part of the research community. This is Shook Focus Digital. And if anything, go ahead and give him. Oh my gosh, only 216 followers, you King. I'm gonna give you a, a follow. And uh, you guys have requested more Swift Coin coverage. Boom, there you go. Go listen to some of his comments or comments content. Right? I don't know if he's on X as well. Um, if you're in the comments, you can definitely uh, let us know about that. But um, thank you for being here, and thank you for sharing the content. Okay, so we're going to share one last thing here, guys. There you go. Okay, so again, knowing Swift here, they mentioned Draper Dragon, but they are Draper Dragon um, affiliated, and they make sure they even highlight that. But I was just curious if, you know, you go down here, One of the things you notice, chain supported, um, of course, two of the biggest ones in uh, Asianic countries is Binance and Tron, one that almost no one talks about, which we talked about before, which is connected to Draper Dragons is Thundercore, okay? Um, but here in this token list, I was wondering, I'm like, okay, let's let's see, can we find... Can we find Jasmine in this list? Well, yes, we can. Jasmine is on their list. So um, <laughs> so we're not wow. far off. We're not far off at all. Jasmine is on their list of connected coins, okay? So yeah. And guys, again. that's not it. I mean, that we're, we're not ending it just off that, you know, to the random Yahoo that will come in here and be like, Oh, you did to show a bunch of coins, you know, <laughs> that is fluff scam, right? Well, we got more than that. You think we'd honestly just leave it at that? No, absolutely not. So just a review from my, from my part here, we got Mizuho Bank, which uh, Swift lists on their medium, right? Uh, we got the connection that Shook Focus just had there with one-stop communication, right? Um, or one-stop one transfer, like, right? Um, we got... Um, D DWF Labs relations to Draper Dragons. Um, and we got that uh Swift crest of six um Japanese noble families, one of which we covered, which were the Maoris, and the Maoris seem very uh big in uh real estate, so there also seems to be a real world asset real estate connection there, possible too. And yes, Swift does have jasmine on its list of coins that it supports so yeah yes. that's all from my end it's super impressive to say the least and uh you know obviously uh we have a lot more so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pause okay um let's see i'm gonna remove this all right i didn't want to remove you especially on your birthday right what the heck 
you know, Max Rug <laughs> Rue on his birthday. No. <laughs> Rug on my birthday. That's it's cold blooded, bro. That would be. Let's kick it back to the comments. Um, guys, I'm going to tell you flat out. Hold on. Let me take the branding off for a second. So that was our fellow brother, Rue Black. Uh, we're going to obviously give him a plug. We're going to kick it back to the comments. All that good stuff. I do obviously have something to share as well. And you guys, you know, it's going to be cool. Um, but man, Rue, thank you so much for, you know, sharing what you did share. And we're going to elaborate a little bit more about that here in a bit. But we're going to show you first, uh, before we take a th the actual real pause, is Rue's channel. I mean, you know, we should have done that at first. I do apologize. On your birthday, didn't you mention that at first? What the heck's on? It's all good, bro. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. So um, here it is. Here is his channel, okay? Um, he can be followed over at this YouTube channel, and it's just at Black Rue, all right? B-L-A-C-K-R-U-E. And, um, you know... He has content in the video section. He does live shows. And speaking of which, would you like to elaborate real quick on that? Oh yeah, guys. Um, I do shows on every um, every uh, Wednesday at six ish, and every Saturday at um, now um, like ten ish uh, Pacific Standard Time. And uh, we cover a lot of stuff. We've been covering Swift a lot lately. But um, coming up soon, I'm going to have a um, one of my guys on uh, MYC Network, and we're going to be talking about one coin, eight patents, one Fortune 500 company. This is one coin who has eight patents and is related to a Fortune 500 company. So we're going to be talking about that next week. That's coming up. And... Um, you know, some some very nice fellow helped me out with some uh, thumbnails. Um, you, you guys might know that guy. <laughs> you might know that guy. But you know uh, what? Ever since I've been doing that, been having some really good uh, interaction. Views have been up. So uh, shout out to that dude. Yeah, I don't know who that could be. May have a thumbnail creation method. I don't know. You know, <laughs> old joke anyway, right? Were you there for that? <laughs> May have no. a, you know what? Oh, God. Uh, okay, sometime when you're bored, go to the Maximus Crypto video section, right? And then uh, type in bloopers. Yeah. And just just enjoy the laugh. That's all I can say, okay? You will literally bust a gut, okay? It's good stuff. It doesn't have, like, you know, thousands of views or anything like that, maybe 100. It's, it's worth it. It's totally worth it, all right? Last night, I almost said may have a... And somebody spelled out, spelled out something about Count Dracula, but I read, <laughs> yeah, Count. Never mind. It's bad. Well, that's uh, right. <laughs> we're not gonna do it. We're not gonna drop off. We just ticked up to over two hundred, two hundred eighteen. Thank you guys for being here. You guys rock. Um, but yeah, give him a follow. This is his YouTube channel, guys. Just in case you're just tuning in, um, at Black Roo. Uh, he does live shows. When are your live shows? Once again. Um, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, um, Pacific Standard Time, and then Saturday morning at around 10 o'clock um, a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Cool. All right. And then um, let's also share this with you guys. He could be followed on X. He's trying to build out his X because, you know, like X marks the spot in the comments. X going to give it to you. Right, so Rue, have you followed on X, and then you know help him take up to fourteen hundred. How cool would that be? And um, you know he's he's starting to post things over there. Um, obviously, shout out to these guys. You know they they're real big on you know the research with Reggie Milton. So we're trying to keep you guys informed in regards to all this. And obviously we have a lot more, and we're going to get into it. But um, yeah, so far so good in regards to the great content. Bring in some of the alpha tonight, Rue. We really do appreciate it. Um, kicking it back to the comments just for a brief bit. We have um, quite a few people that showed up tonight. Salamander, Stargazer, GS. Thank you guys for being here. And let's see here. Let's kick it into the last comment of where I was at earlier. All right. So um, I don't know if I welcome Patrick Collier, but welcome, welcome. Brian Dowie is in the house. Glad to have Brian here um vibra finance let's see if you guys have any specific questions or anything like that right 
Um, all right, so let's welcome E. This is one of your guys from your community. Yep. What is up, E? He's uh, my Telegram moderator. I appreciate you, E. Thanks for being through, coming through. Like like I said earlier, you know, you're Detroit. He's the E. You know, new kid on the block about to get smacked back to. The... Come on, you know what that's from? What's that I, from? I don't know, bro. It's from Eight Mile, from your hometown. Oh my God, I for, I forgot an Eight Mile reference. Oh my God, that's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah, I love that fl- movie too. It's a good movie. The freaking fluffers, your research ain't your type. So take some real advice and form a group with the research version of Vanilla Ice. And when I tell you, you better use it. This is Black Roo, not that hilly billy music. Yeah, and we twice as nice over yeah. here. Right. Anyway. <laughs> Sounds so bad, right? Anyway, all I did is remix the whole thing. Michael Let's Montclair, go. we do yeah, we do appreciate you being here. Let's just read a few more comments. Haroon says this image display icons that are very representative of Japanese culture symbolism. From left to right, top to bottom, we have boom. Here's your answer. Oh, Michael, let's you go. Read you read it. You ask for uh, it, you read it. A folding fan sensu, which is often associated with traditional Japanese arts and performances. A Tori Gate. And that I think is one of the uh, families too, um, a Tory family, uh, a very prominent family, which signifi- signifies ooh, the interest to a Shinto um, shrine and division between the physical and spiritual worlds. Wow, um, a chrysanthemum. You gotta say uh, I like Matt Tyson though. Anyway, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't even think I could do it. Can you do it? Can you do it? Three a chrysanthemum. Which is a symbol of the imperial house of Japan and is often used as a symbol of longevity and rejuvenation. Number four, the image below the fan looks like a stylized wave, reminiscent of the famous woodblock print, quote, the great wave of off Kangawa by Hakusui. <laughs> Number five, like me in the, you know, in the fifth round, Mount Fuji, a symbol of Japan and one of its most iconic natural landmarks, kind of like when I got knocked out by, you know, Buster Douglas in Japan. <laughs> All right, back to you. Mike Tyson, don't sue us, bro. And we do not want to fight you in the ring. L- love Mike. I don't know. Right? Maybe Mike wants to. I- I'm not. I'm I-, not. I, will- I wanted to do it. I mean, he's probably going to knock my head off, but I-, I-, I jump in there, you know? And it's just like, when I think about all that money, it'd be like, XRP, right? Anyway, I'm kidding. Right. Would you fight Mike Tyson for $10 million? Yes. Uh, come oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely comments. would. I only have to be in there. I don't have to. Are you kidding me? I don't have to go like two or three or four or five, six hours. Bro, Bro you might you I'm, might be gone. Like you might be dead in the ring. I know. I'm but, 213 you know. pounds. I don't think I want to take a headshot or a body shot from Mike. I, I, I don't think so. For like, $10 million, though? If, if it's like survival and I get to run around the ring, maybe. All right there, you go. You're gonna you're gonna do a Mayweather, just run around the ring and you know play defense. Anyway, all right, guys. Obviously, get back to crypto. All right. Anyway, um, Boomer after sooner say hello. All right, so let's get to kick it to the next part. Number six. The last symbol appears to be in the clouds, which can represent the elegance and high status in traditional Japanese uh, iconography iconography which is which is cool and maybe maybe it is telling that story Harun. like um maybe it's telling a story through those but um I, we found them to be family crests and number six we said was the maori family so it could be that they're just telling a story with those um with those crests or it could be um families which uh number six is to- um maori and the gate that you saw um, what you said was the Tory gate. I think that is a famous family as well, the Tory family. So um, please, if anybody else knows, uh, I, I would love something in addition to what uh, Haroon said. And again, um, there were um, Japanese letters that were above the crests. So if anyone knows what that says, please put it in the comments. Everything's above the crest. Brush your teeth with some crest and go out and buy some chrysanthemums <laughs> for your mother on this coming Mother's Day. And on Easter Sunday, you want to get a bunch of tulips because you know you don't want to mix the uh, mix chrysanthemums with the with the tulips. Was of Iron Mike on the mic with Maximus Crypto with Black Rue doing it tight. I swear so, to God, I gotta stop. A, if you did a whole show in Mike Tyson voice. 
I would not be able to make it to this through the show, bro. I would not be that able to make it through uh, the show. A bunch of people. There would be some people that would subscribe and some people who like, this guy's a clown. Like, you know, anyway. I used to be on an improv show, so I am kind of a clown, right? Nice. Know? Nice. Yeah, yeah bro. I, I, I used to do uh, acting. I, I have an IMDb really? pro t- profile out there. Yeah. That's Back awesome. Back in the day in Detroit, bro. It, 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 was, it was fun. It was fun. That is cool, man. We'll have to talk about that more over uh, lunch or whatever someday. We still got to do that, obviously. So, yeah, bro, um, that sounds like fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right, a uh, couple more, a couple more comments. I mean, at least he's on topic. Haroon, you can read this one. All right, I, my Mike Tyson's kind of making my mouth a little dry. So, anyway. Ah, okay. Above these icons, there's text that says uh, "Swift Bump." I don't know, uh, which translates to Swift Japanese Story or Swift The Tale of Japan. Nice. Thank you very much, Haroon. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is great. I mean, in all seriousness, Haroon, uh, great info. Thank you. Um, you want to do another one? Or you're like, bro, it's my birthday. Why am I reading so much? No, no, no. I got it. Uh, okay. Swift could, conf- uh, could refer to a company or a brand name, and the icons suggest that the company has a focus on Japanese culture or narratives. Okay. Yeah, well, we know that the the symbol to the left of the letters is uh, Swift's actual logo, um, and Shook Focus earlier in his video goes over that because um, you see that it's like it seems like it could be like a phoenix, um, you know, with a water symbol, and the water symbol has a lot of reference to money. You know, we talk about money as liquidity, right? Um, we talk about the fiscal year, right? Fish. Uh, the Pisces. So um, there's, and and I, I'm I'm probably blanking on. There's so many terms um, when it comes to money and um, water, right? Um, like we got Ethereum, the ether, the air could also be another form of water, if you will, because that's what we breathe. Like fish breathe water, uh, fish take in water as it, its breath. So. Um, it's very interesting uh, that logo. It, it could mean that Swift is kind of a rebirth of money, liquidity, water, if you will. So, um, very, very, very interesting things um, to look at it that way. And you know, you guys know I kind of like to look at um, different things in crypto with like a, a cult kind of hidden way because a lot of these symbols and logos they show us have a cult meanings behind them. Um, but yeah, we could get really deep into that, but, uh, oh, yeah, there's lots of rabbit holes to go down. <laughs> yeah. into. Stargazer. Welcome. Glad to have you back. Um, who was the person I recognized earlier? Uh, that's right. CPR. Hey man, I love that avatar. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, we got Richard Torres says happy birthday, man. Cool stuff. Happy birthday to you. Rue. Thank you, Richard okay, Torres. Okay, Appreciate okay. it. Right. Uh, you got to think about that for a second. That's okay. Um, all right. Let's read this from Trust Truth. Big up, Rue fam. Max What's and up? Shook. You guys doing some tremendous work. I'm new to this better late than, obviously, you're going to say ever at some point. Um, let's also welcome the one and only April Cornwell, Mrs. Cornwell, with her classic, hey, 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 hey. Happy Easter weekend, Max and Rue. Thanks, April. That means a lot. Thank you. Oh, if I pause for a second, I'm a, oh, I'm looking at something that Michael Rogers said here. And he's just giving you a heads up. I'm gonna give you a little disclaimer. There might be a certain troll that's gonna come after you at some point of tonight, and he means it in all like fun. Okay, it's not, not nothing bad. All right, he 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 may be related to this lady, but I, I don't know. I don't know what he's gonna do, but it, it's gonna happen either tonight or sometime in the future. Um, and I've been fairly warned. Okay, so just give me a heads up, Rue. Okay. Okay, right. no worries. All right, Hamish, welcome back. He's very bullish on Swift Coin. Appreciates the content. Yeah, we do have some more. Just trying to recognize you guys. You know, we appreciate you guys being here on the, uh, you know, this. I was gonna say Black Friday. It's you because you're Black <laughs> Rue investing. Good Friday, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, Beebs. Hey, Beebs, welcome back, man. He says, not finding any Easter eggs on Easter egg hunt scam. That's a good point. All right, Tracy. Hey, Tracy, welcome back. Hopefully you're enjoying this, uh, I guess you could say holiday weekend. 
yeah, you need the bloopers for sure. Good stuff. All right, so River is in the house. Beeves, thank you guys. We're going to kick it into the next part of what we have. Are you ready for what we have, Brother Rue? Yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. All right, guys, so I just want to state real quick before we start the segment. Um, let's see how we're doing real quick on the other screen. We have... Total of 87 likes, 76 people on YouTube, and a grand total of 158 on X. So total is 227. Not bad number, especially on a Friday night. Really do appreciate you guys. You rock. Um, you know, cool cat, my bag, my bad if I didn't read some of your comments. It wasn't intentional. Um, I do appreciate you being here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is um Oh, there's a lot more comments that came through, I guess, before we... This is recognize something. You know, we're getting a little bit of leg. I see. Yeah, I'm clicking on the Sorry. comments, and it's lagging big time. That's not good. Maybe it's a Phoenix thing. Maybe you and I have really have some problems. It's not just, you know, snot still dominating yeah. the peasants over here in Northwest Phoenix, <laughs> right? Um, But let's read... Actually, just read a few more comments before we kick it in, because I was thinking that was the end of the comments, and it wasn't. Uh, RTA Varus, welcome. He, he, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Uh, cool cat in the house. Thank you so much. Um, and then this is one of your guys. If you want to read this, yeah, I have an image of Draper Dragon having uh, Swift uh, C, which is Swift, another way to say Swift Coin, um, Telegram, and other projects in their portfolio list. Awesome. Is an image a few years old, but I have to find it in my portfolio of research and and, snap, and screenshots. Thanks, G. Appreciate that. Thank you, G. Uh, Amar and Walker, I think this is the, the whole point with the or the the delay for the comments of the Mike Tyson. Uh, right. Mandoline Bardo. Savage. Yeah, savage. <laughs> Absolutely savage. You know, you, uh, you know who does a great Mike Tyson, I'll just say this, is Joe Rogan. Have really? you heard his? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. He just like, he, he was talking about Mike Tyson back in the day in his prime. He's just like, you ever see Mike Tyson back in his prime? He's, you know, he's just like. You know, Mike Tyson will be consuming everything. He's just out there to destroy. You know, he's, he's got a freaking square head and he's going to go fight Lennox Lewis because he's the spa with him. And, you know, I'm just going to go and drink a, a freaking green uh, parsley shake because it's going to make me energize in the morning when I go out at 5 o'clock in the morning like a savage and just destroy people early in the morning because I don't have enough on demand liquidity in my body. <laughs> All right, enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday. I had to do a little something funny, you know. I all... appreciate it, bro. It's just like all this oh, talk boy. about crypto and street face all the time. Can you have no fun? Come on, all right? All right. right. Can we? <laughs> time for the savage meme coin, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Thank you for that, Mandoline Bondo. Um, Menelago is in the house. By the way, he's teamed up with me. We're gonna have some. Oh man, that's gonna be the mother load is when we release the info about this whole thing with AI. Uh, you guys will see when it gets out. Um, but yeah, Mill Logwood, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. River. No, make... Don't clip that, guys. Nobody clip the mother load. Don't clip that. Oh, it's, it is what it is. Maybe it gives us more publicity or whatever. If anything, the point is not me. It's, it's, it's all this stuff tied into it. It's not just Jasmine. All right, River, in the house, welcome. Make sure you get those ears taped up good before you jump in. Yeah, that's... <laughs> nice. Yeah. nice. You know, I actually saw that fight live back in summer of 97. Um, my friend, he had a, a, another friend of the family across town up in North Portland. Um, and, yeah, we got to watch that live on pay-per-view. It was actually the first pay-per-view fight I ever got to see. And I was like a wow. sophomore in high school. It was really cool. Until Mike bit the ear off of Evander Holyfield and then kind of ended the whole thing but anyway it was cool you know barbecue ribs macaroni and cheese you know all the good stuff we used to enjoy back in the day and not gain a single single pound but right <laughs> not yeah. anymore bro yeah it's like that's what happens when you're in your 40s or whatever right anyway michael rogers appreciate all the research but iso 222 is used by companies like swift not seeing this as a clue or a giveaway we understand and we're not done with it all and if anything um it's all good, right? I'm not convinced that Swift is actually Swift. And um, I think, if anything, on your show, you talked about that, right? Yeah, yeah. And I have replied to that comment. Uh, Swift and Swift, no no connection there. Um, but they did make an agreement that Swift coin could use the Swift, that, that name Swift, 
Um, so there's no technical connection there, but could there be a connection in that, um, you know, we know Swift has a deal with Chainlink, right? Uh, Swift payment, um, payment uh, clearinghouse Swift, the current system we use does have a deal with Chainlink. So cryptocurrencies could go through there. And yes, um, Swift, the coin Swift does have uh, Chainlink as one of the coins that it accepts and has connections to. So there we go that all the Draper things that are going to be probably running through Swift blockchain, uh, the coin could go through that system to Swift, right? To Swift, the current system we use via Chainlink, okay? But is there a direct connection? No. So nice hopefully that's so, clear. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's um, also go further down. Um, thank you, X Marx. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right. Let's see here. Uh, this is from you, actually. The ISO talk <laughs> was in reference to the bank Mizuho being ISO ready. And we have more about that. Uh, your main key t takeaway here before we spill the beans on the Jasmine is Mizuho. Okay. And yep. I'm going to show you guys the direct links and s s some of that stuff and not just say, hey, you know, um, we're doing this because it's, it sounds cool. It's um, I think it's a big deal. It's, it's definitely worth pointing out. You're going to see the common connections and obviously Rue did a great job with getting into some of that stuff, right? All right. Uh, custom crypto. I feel as though, yeah, I mean, conservatively speaking, I mean, I know some people don't see it that way but i mean anything that is labels you know come on man chinese xrp i mean you know as far as a tokenomics perspective you know uh stellar has half the supply of xrp at 50 billion and you know what is it um oh my gosh is it 50 billion or is it 50 million i can't remember anyway i think it's 50 billion and then swift coin right is 10 billion if i'm not mistaken i believe so yeah so that's like one tenth of xrp i believe that's what it is yeah i'm, I'm almost certain because I, I quoted myself on that before all right so we are now at the bottom of the comments add, add some more to that mm -hmm. remember all the connections we made to draper and all the different companies he has right um oh yeah he was huge. an investor in like ethereum uh polygon his draper uh dragons they're connected to oasis Iotech, um, V Chain, um, Thundercore, like he has to have a conduit for all of those different things. And it seems to be Swift. Okay. And Swift was one of the first cross chain um, companies that Coinbase listed. Um, and Draper was an initial investor in Coinbase, right? Um, and Coinbase has that relationship with Stellar via USDC. Um, there are just so many connections in that you can think Swift is going to be a major player over there in the BRICS uh, nations side of the world. Um, uh, yeah, I, I definitely believe that. And one of the things that Max pointed out last show, I believe, was all the different uh, withdrawals of Swift coin. Like somebody's loading up and just taking it and holding it. I don't know yeah. who it is, but. Yeah, we follow whale activity. I mean, you got to follow. It's just it's it's a simple thing to do, and it's not hard to follow. Um, that's the beautiful thing about you know a public ledger or following this stuff, right? You know, you can see what's going on. But um, you know, if we're tracking, you know, was it uh, Ethereum whales, and you know, like hey, this this whale was Shiba Inu, or this particular whale was Jasmine, or whatever the case be, why wouldn't we want to follow that? You know, I mean, I done it with stellar um so i'm glad that you know we were able to kind of give you guys an update in that regard all right so what we're gonna do now is um we are going to just read like maybe two more comments um stargazer wants to wish you a happy birthday thank you stargazer appreciate it yeah and then we also got the one and only says yo peeps been a while hope everyone is doing good making those gains <laughs> all right thank you that's not your voice but that's okay um <laughs> Balaclava, man. Hey, there. Did I miss the Jasmine segment? Uh, part of it, but it's okay. I mean, it's tying in the whole thing of Swift and Jasmine. Is there a real connection? The answer is yes. We're going to show a little bit more to pound at home. 
okay? Let's read this from Custom Crypto. Exactly. Whale's coming in, and I'm already bullish, so I believe. Only 4 billion coins left. Nice. Well put. All right. We're going to use that as a bookmark. Let's go ahead and kick it into <clears throat> my particular outline, right? So I was like, you know what? I've been criticized heavily. Max, when you have a guest, you need to shut the heck up and let them talk. And I would fully agree with every single person about that. That is good constructive criticism, and I could take it. So with that said, <clears throat> we're now going to not just reiterate, but we're going to pound home. Pound it home. Just like we're doing this and telling everybody to smash the like because you want to know something? We're going to solidify and pound it home that much more Rue's research, okay? And I thought, why wouldn't I want to do that? So, Rue, this is for you. Happy birthday to you. This is going to further pound home your research that you presented tonight. And wow, what a bombshell when you messaged me a few hours ago. You're like, hey, bro, I got some connections, Swift and Chasme. I'm like, are you kidding me? Is that really a thing? <clears throat> well, guys, I want to state this. It's the indirect connections of common... You know how we talked about, for example, um, subsidiaries and things like that? That's where we're going with this. And if anything, it's not a nothing burger. I want to share with you why this is good. So let's go ahead and start this segment. As always, later on, we'll get chopped up when you give me some time to do so. So let's go ahead and pull this up. And starting things off, it's kind of a little bit back to what Rue was first sharing. <clears throat> I'm not going to elaborate too much on it. But basically, it's this, Okay. Um, it's Mizuho, right? Like it says, after the launching in Japan, Swift team made immediate contact with many financial institutions in the country to discuss future collaborations. Now, we know when it comes to JASME, you do have quite a few uh, financial sectors and collaborations and so on. And later on, you know, especially with the outline with Menelagwar, we're going to get into another particular bank and why that's important. But tonight is Mizuho. <clears throat> and Getting more into this, you know, Control F is definitely going to be my friend tonight because I don't want to make this the three hour segment. But Mizuho Bank Limited, like it says, let's go ahead and full screen this. Um, goes on to mention uh, this whole thing of being integrated with retail, corporate banking. Mizuho Bank has over 505 branches, offices in Japan, 36 other countries, a prefecture of Japan. But Swift Team, Tokyo branch, introduced. This whole business model roadmap representatives of Mizoho Bank demonstrated the great interest in blockchain tech and the idea of Swiss transfer agreement. OK, so this is Mizuho. OK, and I think we talked enough about this. <clears throat> um, Brother Rue did a good job of. Getting into that outline, I don't want to, you know, just keep pounding that particular part home, but I want to give a shout out to this guy and this is over on Reddit. Like I've always mentioned before, it's not just CryptoX, it's also Reddit. So he posted this 16 hours ago, all right? Now hear me out. This is some of the juicy stuff. So this is what you've been waiting for. Well, you got a real treat. Let's go ahead and full screen this. And what you're going to see here is this theory around carbon credits in Mizuho with Jasmine. Now I'm telling you flat out, this is going to really, really strike the whole notion of, okay, there has to be a connection. Yes, there's a connection, and we're going to get into that. So I'm going to full screen it once again, and when we get more into the outline, you're going to see some other things pop up that's worth mentioning. Mizuho and Climate Impact X join forces to scale international carbon credit markets in Asia. How long ago was this posted? Only a few months ago, right? November 28, 2023, Mizuho and Climate Impact X join forces to scale international carbon credit market. Aha. Where is old Max going with this? Well, as you guys know, I joke around quite a bit. Why not? It's fun to joke around. I always talk about the Rice Crop Consortium, right? Let's go. Well, that's not just me joking about it, right? Understand Jasmine is a key player when it comes to the greater scheme of things when it comes to, you know, carbon offsets and stuff like that. Whether we want to agree with it, I understand it's a kind of unpopular thing, but... Hedera is at the table. There's a, quite a few others at the table, right? So this whole thing of Mizuho, right? Mizuho Swift, Mizuho Jasmine. And I'll give you a little bit more about Jasmine here in a bit. But it's the impact, join forces, scale international carbon credit market. Is there common ground here? That's your key takeaway. For me, the answer is yes. Let's go ahead and full screen this a little bit more, getting more into this. 
you see some of these things. He has this person who, um, let me give him a shout out. That's, uh, I always like giving these guys a shout out. Jazzilla. So Jazzilla, if you're watching this later on, shout out to you. Thank you so much for the, for the input, right? But he has a theory around Mizuho and Jasmine. And this, if anything, pound home, not necessarily Mizuho and Jasmine, but Mizuho, Jasmine, and Swift, right? Swift coin. Mizuho, like he says, are one of the biggest Japanese banks, but they also have venture capital side. Aha. Who do we know when it comes to venture capital, a big proponent of venture capital? Well, it's who? Mr. Rue? Tim Draper. Yeah, absolutely. So the Jasmine and Carbon Tokens part has come out. And, of course, he started to do some research. He says Mizuho can't invest in Jasmine yet due to restrictions. But when it, uh, this is approved in Parliament, he suspects that Mizuho will be amongst the first of the VC firms, look at that, to invest in Jasmine. Now, let's take a pause on that. This is where I actually want to get a little bit of your input, your key takeaway. Because you have been pounded home 110%. This whole notion of Tim Draper being literally involved in a lot of things. He's this uh, silent king of crypto. Remember, that's what you said last time you were yes. with us? Yes. So elaborate a little bit more on this before we kick it into a little bit more of the research. Well, we just saw Tim Draper and we talked about Gemini, right? So Jim, not only was he an initial investor in Coinbase, he's an investor in Gemini. Um, he's an investor in um, um, uh, CoinDX, which is in India. He's an investor uh, in, in their swift connections to Bitthumb in Korea. Like, there's so many connections. He initially invested in Ledger. Like, there's so many Tim Draper connections. Like, I did do a, a, a whole separate show on it on my channel. Like, there's too many connections to um, even, even mention. He has his own school. He, he has the Draper Dragons. He has the Draper Associates. Um, he's invested in Tezos. Uh, he's invested in so many different cryptos. And since he partly owns uh, Coinbase, you could also say everything that Coinbase Ventures is invested in, he owns as well. So it, <laughs> the, the, the list is too big to count. And if you, if you take like all the different cryptos that Coinbase Ventures is invested in, it's, it's just insanity. It's insanity. So when I say that, like, Augustine Karsten's like a fat kid on cake, basically Tim Draper is the cake. 100, 100%. Oh, and who so knows, bad. like, how many cryptos that uh, Coin uh, DX in India are invested in because he also, since he owns parts of them, how many are they invested in? How many is um, um, Gemini Ventures is invested in? So if you, if you go to, through all those tentacles... Like literally, the man's like, <laughs> how many cryptocurrencies is that? Like, who knows? Yeah, you know, I, I think he has to be one of the whale of whales. But anyway, um, yeah, I just want to get your two cents on that because I mean, you, you've been talking a lot about that, right? Um, pulling up a little bit more in regards to this. Go, let's go ahead and full screen this again. So, I like some of the terminology that you know this guy mentions. He says putting the dots together. The announcement came in November 23rd and has given Jasmine time to sit and think about how it could integrate into the ecosystem. Mizuho invested in this, but have been behind the scenes meetings about how to integrate Jasmine into it. Looking at who Mizuho are involved with and they are in the same places as Jasmine. My prediction will be major investment from Mizuho in June slash July. Now, this part I will read. He said you couldn't find much on climate impact, X technology, maybe suggesting that Jasmine could be used. We're going to get more into some of these key things, okay? And I do appreciate this individual's research. But I want to put a little bit more focus on this, where he says, looking at Mizuho, who they're involved with, same places as Jasmine. For me, back to you, Bru, and that is, who they're involved with, same place as Jasmine, it's Swift. You know, yep. it's that swift connection because of VCs, you know, yep. and, and and I get it. I mean, for all we know, and I do appreciate this researcher, right? You know, if you're watching, you know, um, thank you again. Uh, you might not be into SwiftCoin. And, and again, naturally, like that would be I just want to state this for the record for everybody. Right. 
that would be like if there was a coin called, I don't know, X2ZF, right? I'm just throwing some random thing out there. And it's like, I never researched that. I just don't know, right? There's a lot of things that we all learn about. So I don't know if this guy knows about Swift Coin or has researched Swift Coin, but to me, that's that answer. That's not me trying to act like a smarty pants hot shot because I don't, I don't like doing that. That's being disrespectful. But the answer, yes, is Mizuho, Swift Jasmine. All right, a little bit more about this. Has that not caught your guys' attention? If it hasn't, then I don't know what to tell you, but I would appreciate, again, smash that like because it does help. Let's get this program ticked up to 300. We're at 282. Not bad numbers for a good Friday. All right, let's take it over to this. Remember how we were talking about Tim Draper, right? So back to what Rue was talking about. Let's go ahead and full screen this. Interview Tim Draper on FinTech, China, and ESG criteria. Now, when we know about the nitty gritty about you know patents when it comes to jasmine um esg definitely stands out um just to got, kind of give you guys a heads up if you type in uh if you look for that thumbnail right it's jasmine vanguard esg right tadashi marita again if you want to see that deep dive outline i think when i chop it up you'll see a end screen card where you can watch that deep dive that video is from like I think October or November or something like that. That will give you a big idea, all right, with a lot of research on why ESG, Tadashi Marita, Jasmine is a big deal. And he even mentions like Vanguard, okay? So getting into this, you know, December 15, 2021, you have Tim Draper pictured here. And it says basically, Tim Draper says he's been ESG forever. Interesting. Who is another person that's ESG forever? It's Tadashi Morita, Jasmine. So it makes sense that Ooh. if Tim Draper is all about ESG, that it's like, oh, there's Mr. Da Tadashi Morita who's all over T you know, ESG because all the patents. Ah, do we have common ground here? Yes, we have common ground here. Okay. Going further into the outline of what we have, we're not going to just end it there. You will see some other interesting things. Back to the whole thing about, you know, venture capitalists and so on. Tim Draper is probably one of the most well-known, like Rue was talking about. In the world, in the founder of International Network of Firms, Draper Associates, DFJ, Draper Venture Network. Back to what Rue was talking about. Were you aware that Tim Draper has been investing in fintech before the term, before the term was even popularized? Now, I know this is going to be a stretch. I'm going to come back to my friend. Guys. There's not enough talk about Jasmine in the whole connection with finance democracy. But the writing is literally on the wall. Is it not, Root, when you see statements like this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and keep in mind, too, like uh, Japer's, Japer's father, he, he, he uh, created Silicon Valley before it was known as Silicon Valley. So, like, that's that's getting back there, like... Like now his son is kind of putting in all the work for a cryptocurrency. So it's crazy. It's crazy to think about it that way. Right. Um, and one notable thing there they don't list is Draper Dragons. Um, so <laughs> I think Draper it gets Dragon. into this on either this particular link or a different one. It's going to mention a little okay. bit more about that. Yeah. Gotcha. But you're saying about Draper Dragons. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, the Draper Dragons is his uh, Chinese arm. That is the arm, the Chinese arm of uh, Draper's investments. Um, and the reason I think they kind of did it that way um, is because there's this whole, you know, the whole thing that, you know, China versus the U.S. So he has to separate his Chinese investments from his, you know, his U.S. investments. Yeah. Well, we're going to show you guys a little bit more in regards to this. So. You know, back to what Rue was talking about, right? Billions of dollars in investments, um, you know, with more than 200 deals. Draper has been early backer of, again, all those ones that, you know, Rue mentioned, right? But, I mean, here's some ones, obviously Coinbase. I mean, this is, again, why Coinbase, in my opinion, also Rue, listed, um, you know, the Swift coin. Yeah. On their exchange, I mean, you know, some people complain like, oh, you can't get Swift Coin on every single exchange, but yeah, you can get it on, you could get it on uh, Coinbase. And are you aware when we talk about pairings, 
Are you aware that you can actually purchase with fiat US dollars straight to SwiftCoin? That's interesting. All right. Tad bit more in regards to this. Pull this up. Um, in this interview, of course, he discussed the current state of fintech, right? That's all good stuff. China's rule, right? But he's really into fintech and he's really into the whole thing of, you know, being a big proponent of venture capital and, you know, these investments like like this question. What are VCs most looking for in terms of investment long term? He says, I can't speak of, you know, for all VCs, but he, what he looks is for a future he wants to live in a future he wants to live in. Huh? That kind of hints a little bit of what? Rue? Society 5.0, maybe? Oh, nice. Well, yeah. and more ESG and More well. ESG, exactly. So, I mean, I really think there's obviously a big thing there. And we're not just going to end it on that. Let's take it to the next part. We're going to take you to this. And um, this is uh, LinkedIn. And, you know, I've been stating this. And, um, you know, shout out to her brother, Channing Harrell. Um, and that is, and also Quan Papa. Quan Papa mentioned, you know, it's been very quiet when it comes to these blue chips tied into, uh, not just fintech, but tied into like, you know, the ISOs or, you know, CBDCs, you know, Project Raws, all this stuff, right? They don't post a lot on Twitter anymore, but you know where they do post all their institutional juicy stuff? These platforms. Yeah, for real. If you want to get the good stuff, you got to go to like LinkedIn and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's note, a real thing. And note the stuff that we uh, mentioned earlier with uh, Shook Focus about fintech and uh, Mizuto or Mizu Mizuho. Uh, we mentioned that they were wanting to get into fintech and that they were also ISO 20022 ready, right? And that was that one stop area that we were looking at that related to SWIFT. Right, exactly. And, you know, for some people are like, well, Jasmine's not ISO. Well, you do have Kunutaki Ando, who is part of the company that is ISO compliant. We did point that out in a, in a deep dive before. And there was another one that we talked about that's a different ISO standard. So, yeah, they're, they're really exposed to the whole notion of ISO. Not ISO 222, but there's different ISO standards. All right, I'm going to full screen this. Let's pull this up. And on this... Does it mention anything about common ground for carbon for Swift and obviously Jasmine? Well, here's the answer. Boom. Look at this. It says under the alliance, and this is back to Mitsui Mizuho Bank, right? I'm trying to highlight that there just in case you missed it. Innovation, right? Look at this. They conclude this whole thing about this alliance agreement. Under the alliance, E Dash will procure finance totaling 2.5 billion yen through additional investment by mitsui who's an existing shareholder but back to mizuho as well as third party allotment of new shares to be subscribed to and by mizuho innovation frontier look at this for a second guys companies in every sector and industry are working toward the achievement of carbon neutrality by 2050. that's the whole mission of society 5.0 if you think about it by disclosing data, hmm, interesting, and reducing their CO2 emissions. A key priority in this context is the creation of mechanisms to help companies make a smooth transition to decarbonization and to support decarbonization and industry restructuring across entire supply chains. A little bit more about this. In February 2022, Mitsui established eDash, which provides comprehensive support efforts to realize carbon neutrality our carbon neutral society in Japan and this visualization of CO2 emissions by companies and local governments um, to the development of specific emission reduction methods goes on to mention a little bit more about this collaborative effort, right? SMEs and going down further, you have this whole thing of Alliance represents an agreement and commitment by the four companies to create mechanisms. Think about that in itself to support not only the visualization of CO2 emissions by individual companies, but also decarbonization and industry restructuring across entire supply chains. Look at this. Four companies will work together on various levels, including the development and proposal of new businesses and the solutions. I mean, did we not see something big mentioned yesterday on the show with the whole thing in Kansas and Nevada, right? 
with Panasonic and that whole connection to Tesla. If you didn't watch that show, you want to owe it to yourself to watch that. It was a big deal. Getting to the next part of what we have, let's talk about a little bit more about Mizuho. So, you know, there was this piece from CoinDesk, okay? Um, I'm going to full screen this one. This is good stuff as well. So CoinDesk back in 2022 talked about the ins inside the company building Japan's multi-staker, multi-staker, multi-stake holders, digital yen. Remember how we were always putting a lot of focus on digital yen, Japanese yen denominated stable coins. Guys, I'm telling you flat out, there's some big news that was dropped and a lot of people have talked about it. We're going to talk about it. I know it says 2022 here. We're going to take it to 2024 here in a bit. You got to be patient with that. Decurrent was born out of Japan's oldest internet firm. All right. When you get into this, it says the member list includes MUFG Bank, Sumo, Sumitomo, which I'm doing some stuff with Men and Logwire, just a little hint there, Mitsui Banking Corp, and Mizuho Bank Japan. Now, the interesting thing is this, okay? Local governments, but the company has connections to national government with former chairman in financial services agency. You know how I'm always talking about Genki Oda, you know, SBI Japan, FSA, JVCEA. There's another guy, all right? Who's the other guy? Well, let's zoom in. So you have this whole thing of the FSA, the Bank of Japan, three ministries are also sitting in on the discussions. That was back then. But it was the stairway to digital currency. I'm telling you flat out, I'm showing you this because it's going to give you an idea of how the Japanese yen denominated stable coins all come together. So since its founding, Decurrent had its eyes on launching a digital currency. Huh. But due to stable coin regulation in Japan, the company started out with a crypto exchange business. The thinking was that working on blockchain tech would further Decurrent's digital currency ambitions regardless of specific use case. They talk about this whole thing of, you know, it's been years since the exchange started and then, of course, turned a profit. But they talk about this whole thing about crypto exchanges in Japan had a hard time turning a, turning a profit. This was back in 2022 with many, many struggling to keep up with compliance rules. Who kept up more than anybody else when it came to compliance rules? It was Jasmine, hence why they got that title of the Bitcoin in Japan. Now, you guys know this, but... Why I want to pound it home a little bit more is when you see this about the taxes of up to 55% on gains have been spurred. Some exchanges to pack their bags, head overseas. That didn't happen. Why? Because they embrace crypto. Now back to the whole thing about a digital yen. This was all worked on years ago, but we had to get to where we need to be today. Decurrence digital yen be issued by different banks using its platform. Again, different banks using its platform will be one of those banks, you guys. It's Mits, you know, the one we've been talking about tonight, right? Um, you know, I always forget all these names sometimes. Mizuho. Mizuho, right. Thank you very much for saving my butt tonight. <laughs> um, but yes, you know, it, it's Mizuho, right? So the point is different banks using its platform. Which company will be charging the banks? The ledger of each bank will come together in the so-called common era where a central ledger, listen to this, guys, of the digital yen supply will be kept according to this white paper. And then we get more into it. It talks about bank-to-bank -bank transactions. I'm telling you, everything that's mentioned here has Jasmine written all over it, especially when it, it comes to finance democracy. Yeah. Um, the current working with the Bank of Japan, other government agencies for a regulatory system, you're going to do what? You're going to make a digital yen. It mentions all this stuff about blockchain and it worried about compliance. So you, you have the all in one uh, package, obviously, with, you know, for example, Jasmine. Let's go further down. The central bank is also looking to digital currency. See, here's the proof. But the current doesn't view this exactly as competition. Private issued digital yen can coexist with CBDC. Much like the right of, you know, central banks coexisting with private banks. We know that, right? Tokyo's private metro lines coexist with the municipal ones. But here's the point, you guys. The point is realizing... I'm going to kick it to the next thing real quick. Um, 
let's come back in the frame. The point here is realizing that there is all this groundwork that was laid for Japanese yen denominated stable coins to be paired up with Jasmine. Now I do have something a little bit more in the modern point of view, mod modern news. Um, I'm going to now take you over to this and it mentions Mizuho numerous times. Okay. So this is again back 2019. I'm telling you flat out, I'm pointing this out because I want you guys to have an idea of this notion that Muzoho is not behind blockchain tech. And it's just like, it's just a, you know, I, I guess you could say like a theory that's not solidified. I, I, I don't think that's the case. Here, let's solidify it, right? So let's full screen this as well. I'm telling you, this is good stuff to read about or, you know, at least learn. Mizuho back in 2019, guys, uh, five years ago, right? Did have big plans for native crypto J coin. Now that's not Jasmine, okay? So I want to state that. But the point is they were on board for the whole thing of digital currency, blockchain technology, all this stuff. So when we get into this, it talks about how on March 1st of 2019, Mizuho planned to launch a tailor-made stable coin for remittance and other payment-related activities. Now, Ooh. yeah, you know where I'm going with this. So if we have common ground with Mizuho and Swift and Jasmine, do you guys not see where the connection is? The connection is what, my friend? Swift and um, Jasmine uh, there, right? And Mizuho. And Mizuho, and Mizuho is, right? is the supreme connection. Oh, sorry, let me put you on the spot on your birthday. Shame on you. Um, but the point is, guys, it is Mizuho, okay? That's the common ground, VCs, all that stuff. And I, again... I want to not just leave you with that because, again, you're going to see some dates coming up here soon about summer 2024. Um, of course, obviously trying to have, you know, our fellow brother Rue interact because, you know, there's always going to be somebody mentioned on, on the Chopped Up. You don't let your guests talk enough. It's like you're watching <laughs> the Chopped Up version. You're not watching the live. Right. And that's where that comes from. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, they plan to launch that tailor-made stable coin for remittance and other payment-related services. Launch date has been officially announced, at least back then, um, after the company entered into a partnership with nearly 60 financial institutions together wow. boasting, yeah, 56 million customer accounts. Again, why am I sharing this? So I want you guys to understand this, okay? Why does Maximus put so much emphasis on Japanese yen denominated stable coins to pairings? Pairings are enablers. And if you have something that is labeled as you want to have this for security in the form of what, guys? A personal data locker. This is yet another example of how we get to these crazy price targets of 2026 $17 KPI because this paired with what? Personal data locker. Jasmine's native token. And in that, it doesn't just end there, right, Rue? There's, uh, there's other ones that are going to be paired with it, you know? Yeah. It just goes yeah. on and on, and, and it it seems to like uh, via Swift uh, Swift blockchain, uh, they have a nice conduit out to the rest of the world. Um, if if you know that connection is solid, right? Um, just wanted to add that. Yes, absolutely. So, um, there's there's a little bit more. I think. Um, yeah, let me see. Uh, there's a few just key highlights. So, you know, 10 total highlights on Mizuho. We're not going to spend a lot of time just right here. But um, look at this. Did, does it mention that Mizuho cryptocurrency platform? Aha. Uh -huh. Mizuho cryptocurrency platform. Interesting. Will host the native currency dubbed JCoin. The platform will supposedly link the digital wallets allotted to clients with their respective bank accounts. Oh, my God. What is Jasmine looking to do with the Super Wallet? Again, guys, this is why we connect stuff for you, right? So Jasmine making that bold move with the announcement last year of we're entering finance democracy. Do you now understand why they have chosen to enter finance democracy? It's common ground. SwiftCoin, Mizuho, Jasmine, Mizuho. Oh, we need VCs. No problem. Who's the plug? Who's the connect? I don't know. This guy named Tim Draper? right it's just mind-boggling when you get more into it right anyway a little this kind of sounds like how um paypal has their own paypal usd you know 
Exactly. Kind of sounds just like that. Except, thank you. I, I was going to include that, but that's awesome. I'm glad you're pointing that out because that is true. That is a great way of looking at it for people that maybe like, I don't get this, you know, and that's okay, guys. So, yeah, there's all that. Um, getting into a little bit more about this. Let's pull this up again. Um, look at this. Mizuho Financial Group, which total assets, at least back in 2019, was $1.8 as of December 31st, 2018, mentioned, I said 2019, I said 2018, uh, mentioned that the native currency would be administered by a custom built mobile app. <laughs> custom built mobile. Who is also doing a custom built mobile app? Jasmine, right? The super wallet. Anyway, I'm talking to you guys' heads off about that. Um, look at this name JCoin Pay, utilizing QR codes, point of sale to finish payments to vendors. Scrolling a little bit further down about this, commenting on the new age payment services, Tatsu Fumi Sakai. CEO Mitsuho told the Nikkei, quote, the arrival of all these new entrants into the digital payment space is eroding the common sense notion that payment services are provided by financial institutions. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, that that's basically solidifies the whole notion that we're not sticking just with the traditional finance sectors. This is the whole point of investing into, like Tim Draper does, right? Blockchain and DLT. I mean, that just kind of backs everything up that you literally shared with us earlier, my friend. Happy birthday yep. to you, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, I was blown away when you told me this. So you mentioning, Rue, I don't know, three or four hours ago, you know, hey, bro, tonight we're going to make these connections. Open up a rabbit hole for me because I wasn't aware of these connections. And, of course, I did some of my own research and I was like, well, if anything, we're going to solidify this. We're going to let people know that, Wow. You know, um, and I, you know, some people will give me criticism and say, that's enough. You don't need to go more. I want to give you some of the modern or the, the recent, you know, uh, dates coming up here in, the, in a bit. Um, full screen it again. You're going to see here it says to ensure adoption. Guys, these terms are amazing. All right. To ensure adoption. Because we're always talking about mass adoption. Mizuho is trying to have a tie-up with large retail sector players. Hmm, interesting. Mizuho is negotiating with Family Mart, convenience store, and Big Camera, an electronic retailer, East Japan Railway, a transport company, who is also trying to do all of this for pairings. Right, it's Jasmine. Like we always mention, Jasmine pairs well with benefiting the local economy through what? Everything that you've seen here and everything that we mentioned for over a year or more with the research. And it's not just me, right? Jesse, K Hire Finance, there's a lot of great guys, right? You know, Dip Metaverse, uh, shoot, Brian. I mean, I could go, I could give you a whole grocery list of some of those guys. I apologize if there's anybody I'm missing. Or how about the guy from earlier from Reddit? So the point is, these connections, not just saying, well, what if, going from what if that was speculative to, I think there's obviously common ground, okay? Um, there is more to share here. I know I keep saying there's more, I, you know, some people tell me they're like, man, you're like Billy Mays of crypto. You're like, but wait, there's more, you know, well, <laughs> there is more. And, you know, you're tuning in here for a reason. You're excited about future generational wealth. And the way I look at it, Jasmine's the absolute bee's knees. Um, and I think obviously swift coin is a very, very, uh, underrated project that's been kept hidden, you know, like we mentioned last time. So look at this Mizuho intends to bring, on board a minimum of 300,000 stores and sign up a minimum of 6.5 million cl clients in the next few years. So th those other numbers, you know, that was a big deal, but a minimum. So again, you know, when we talk about KPI targets and so on, understand when people say, oh, you know, Panasonic is the only example or Avita is the only example or, you know, Transcosmos is the only example. Are you not understanding pairings? This is why we explain and put so much emphasis on pairings. And for all the naysayers that want to say, Max, you need to stop putting big deal on pairings. Okay, I hear you. Let me show you why you want to pay a big, uh, you know, pay attention, I should say, to pairings. Let me show you one of the biggest pairings of them all. It's this right here. Let's go to CMC. On CMC, we know that when it comes to all this stuff, you know, Bitcoin has a lot of pairings, does it not? Of course it does. 
and it's paired basically with everything. Okay. When you click on markets, do, do this for yourself, right? Call it homework. I don't know. Call it whatever you want. Binance provides a bunch of pairings. So Tether is a big, huge pairing, is it not? Solano, BTC. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many examples, right? Pairings, pairings, pairings. All right. So you get the point about pairings. Can I give you another example of why pairings are so important? Well, it's Tether. It's USDC. So let's click on volume. Why would you want to do that? Well, understand this. Tether is a stable coin, is it not? Absolutely it is. It just stays at a dollar value. The point we're trying to share here is Tether consistently does number one in volume. Why? Boom. There you go. Because it's a freaking pairing. You have to have it to pair with what you're trying to buy as far as some of these cryptocurrency projects, right? So my thing is this, okay? That's number one when it comes to pairings. All right, and you have to understand how this is an enabler of so many different projects because this is paired with what BTC, ETH, Doge, Solana, Litecoin for 3,539 pages. Jesus, <laughs> right now, do you guys have an understanding of why old Maximus here? Put so much effort and emphasis on Japanese yen denominated stable coins and pairings because pairings are the enablers. This is what we want. So to see in the research that we provided you guys tonight that there's Mizuho Bank doing these big things, which is take you back to it. Full screen it again. 300,000 stores in signing up a minimum of 6.5 million clients in the next few years. Understand that that number is probably a lot larger than it is. Okay, that's just Mizuho Bank. What about some of the other ones? Sumo Timo, Sumo, Sumo Timo, whatever it's called. I can't ever pronounce these things right. Many other banks. Bank of Japan. On and on and on. Pairings. So Jasmine to have all these pairings that benefit the society of Japan and other places is absolutely massive. And then also have SwiftCoin part of the mix. That's huge too. Okay, so I want to get your thoughts on just a little bit of this before, because we have a little bit more, not a tat, not a huge, you know, bunch more. What do you think about some of this stuff? I think like when you pair this into uh, Tim Draper and his empire, um, and again, guys, the the number of exchanges that he's connected to uh, via the Draper Dragons in this uh, side of the world is so huge. Um, with the coin DX, and I'm leaving out like a, a ton of different exchanges, right? Um, if we were to just bring up Swift and see all the different blockchains it's connected to, you saw Binance and Tron, right? Uh, we also saw that o they were partnered with OKX. So, yeah, oh, yeah, there, screen, right? yeah, yeah, there it is. So, let me uh, go back to the exit full screen here. Okay, so. Like, I'll full screen it for you. There you go. Okay, so all of these guys are connected. One of the th ones that they don't list on here is Stellar. And you know that they're connected to Stellar because Coinbase is one of their partners. Okay? And again, uh, Tim Draper was an initial investor in Coinbase. Um, and I showed you guys last show how uh, Coinbase had, or I, it might be on one of my latest videos, where Coinbase has a partnership with um stellar let me let me go ahead and see if i can find that right quick because if you see that that partnership this brings exactly in what what uh what max was saying but instead of from the tether side it's from the usdc side and it's like when you get usdc you got all the uh, uh world economic forum guys right there like like all, all right there and technically, I mean, I know it sounds bad when we talk about some stuff, but I mean, again, guys, back to Genkyota, he is part of the WEF, you know, and that is one of their plugs, whether, you know, we liked it or not. Okay, so yeah, let me, let me, uh, let me bring this. Up While here. he's bringing that up, guys, I just want to give you guys a thanks, especially on our fellow brother Rue's birthday. Thank you so much for allowing us to scale up to 331 combined on the live stream from YouTube and also X. 73 on YouTube, 258 on X. My goodness, 331. You guys rock. 
So, yeah, nice way to celebrate your birthday by having some good attendance. Oh, yeah, for sure. Appreciate you guys. Let's yes, shoot. yes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to double check some things. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you got a presentation. Okay, hold on. Okay, there it is. So here it is. Coinbase integrates USDC on Stellar. So understand this, that USDC is kind of intimately integrated with Coinbase. So like at all those USDC pairings um, and everything that Coinbase has, um, it, it's intimately uh, linked there. So, and, and here it is. Um, starting today, Coinbase uh, fully supports uh, deposits and withdrawal with Circle's uh, USDC coin via the Stellar network. So Stellar is like intimately into Coinbase. And remember, again, Draper is an initial investor in Coinbase. So essentially he owns Coinbase, essentially. Um, Stellar has developed an extensive global network of interoperable on and off ramps um, provided by anchors, wallets, exchanges, and fintech businesses. Oh, my um, goodness. Again, fintech yeah. again, um, transferring value from fiat to digital or digital to fiat on off uh, the network with this launch coinbase adds another significant on uh, another significant ramp for usdc on stellar enable enabling millions of institutional and retail customers to access a truly global digital dollar global digital dollar that's what a lot of people say usdc is and here it is actually in writing right um, <laughs> I didn't notice that before when I was reading this, but uh, very, very, uh, very uh, good there. Um, and also they go on to emphasize uh, MoneyGram here. Remember, Stellar and MoneyGram. Users can seam seamlessly exchange uh, fiat cash for USDC on Stellar and vice versa. Thanks to MoneyGram, Claimy, and supporting wallets across 180 countries and 300K plus locations. This means users can take their fiat cash and convert it to USDC in a digital wallet or convert their USDC into fiat cash in hand using the Stellar network with addition to with a, the addition of Coinbase as an on-ramp. Millions of users have access to USDC and can enter a network of global cash um, access points to and from crypto. So, so this part is extremely huge. Um, even though Swift does not list Stellar as uh, one of their um, networks that they're linked to, they are automatically linked to them because they are linked to Coinbase. Okay. So now imagine now um, Mizuho and um, Jasmine are linked to these guys via Swift. So that links everything. That links literally everything. If we go back to. Um, if we now uh, let me go take back a pause, to... brother, just for a quick second, because sure. this is good. This is going to pound home what you just said in regards to Stellar. Sure. So, guys, and and Rue, I don't know if if you remember this either, um, but we reported, I think, a few months ago. I think it was like maybe beginning of this year, or maybe it was late last year. But um, so it was originally the beginning of 2023 or late 22, 22. I can't remember. Um, Japan decided to ban uh, foreign stable coins, Tether and Circle. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. So the report, again, this is another happy birthday to you with because it's going to pound home your research. The report showed that Stellar was unbanned from Japan. And, you know, that was a big deal. And if you think about it, it was like we were pointing out like, wow, what will be the next big thing as a positive catalyst for like things like Jasmine? And then, you know, not that much longer after that, we got some, of course, some of the big news about, you know, with, with what Jasmine was doing. And, you know, uh, I don't I'm not going to say it was like right then we had a big pump. I mean, it was a very insignificant pump. But I always point out, guys, these pairings are the enablers why is that important because it gives people access to just simply purchase the asset you know that's the whole yeah. point and so yeah i think that part is crucial back to what you're saying some people ask why wasn't it tether well 
back to your research. It's because it made more sense for it to be with a global. What did you say? Uh, Pay, well, uh, you know, digital dollar or yeah, or a global, were, yeah. a global stable coin, a global digital dollar compared to. And some people say, well, you know, Tether has more pairings, and they technically do, but Circle is right up there, and you do have a sense of more of that trust. And last I checked, when it comes to Japan, the whole point is trust. So, yep. and, and yeah, Tether's got kind of a bad name, you know what I mean? Understand that uh, Circle's um, CEO, he's listed on the World Economic Forum's uh, website. So, <laughs> more connections there. And like you said, uh, did you say Hara had um, relations to the uh, World Economic Forum? No, not Hara. Um, it was uh, Genki Oda. Genki Oda. Okay. Um, is the Jasmine plug to Bitpoint, and then you know there's the whole thing of Kuntaki Ando, Cosmos Soft. I mean, it's, it's a long thing. Like there's SBI Japan. I've done a whole deep dive on, on uh, you know Genki Oda, but you know, this guy is is literally, you know, like was it the FSA, which is Japan's SEC, right? But they embrace crypto. They don't. They're not like Gary Gensler. Um, so there's that SBI Japan, and then of course you know Bitpoint. I mean, this guy, and then you know World Economic Forum, obviously. So he's like in the four huge, huge sectors, right? So anyway, um, did, was there more you want to elaborate on that, or do you want to? Uh, okay. I do want to elaborate more, but I need to take like a two minute break here. Can we? Take oh a yeah, no problem. Break? I'm gonna kick it into the comments while you do that, my friend. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Be right back. Right. No problem. Um, so let's just go ahead and pull them off for a second. We'll bring them back in. And we're going to kick it back to the punk, uh, the comments. Excuse me. All right. All right. We got a lot of comments to get back into. I do appreciate you guys being here. I know it's a lot to get into, right? I mean, but, you know, get into the topic of Jasmine and Swift. Uh, there's going to be a lot that's to be mentioned. You know, that's what kind of comes with the territory. Um, anyway. All right. So let's go back into it. Let me see how long ago he asked that. 7.52. Okay. All right. So who is next on the comments? We have Tizzo, Cars and Crypto. What a do, fam? Hey, man. Welcome back, Tizzo. Glad to have you. Um, Always like that avatar. Always like the Nissan Skyline, right? Boomer Half and Sooner says, Swiftcoin, 4 billion circulating. And River, so how's the Swift chart looking for buys? Well, uh, we can pull some of that up as well. Hold on a second. Swift C. Ah. You know, it did climb up to the sixes, and now we had a little bit of a pullback. Why is it not sharing us? Hold on a second. I got to fix all this. Let's present this in a different way. Hopefully you guys see this now. Yeah, you do see it now. So to answer your question, River, um, here's what's going on with SwiftCoin. You know, it did reach the sixes. I think it was up as much as like 16% on the day. It's kind of averaged out and so on. Um, I came in roughly at 0 0.0052, I think it was. Um, what was really significant, I think it was like about a week ago, we did see it pull into, I think it was like the fours, just barely, right? Um I know you don't really see that right there, but there was a moment that it did. Yeah, here it is. Pulled into the fours. Um, my God. Anybody that got into it early March, man, you were happy because you saw some big gains, right? Anyway, so, you know, you got to make your decision on it. I mean, I kind of treat SwiftCoin, just to be honest, about kind of like how I originally treated Jasmine um, for the perspective of you can buy, even right now, I wouldn't recommend buying anything on a green candle, guys. Just be honest about that. Um, but you could buy five hundred nine. Was it five hundred and ninety-four dollars and ten cents worth of this coin plus whatever fee it is on exchange? Um, Ruse back, um, and you could get a hundred thousand of them. I mean, I used to treat that like with with Jasmine. You know, I did that like four particular times. So. I kind of treat it in, in that notion, but again, I mean, you know, we all have our own budgets and so on. Welcome back, by the way. Um, they're yep. asking, you know, uh, how's the chart looking? I was just kind of letting them know. But um, 
yeah, we're going to get more into some of this. We're just kind of recognizing a few more of you guys in, in the comments. This is at 7.08, um, almost an hour ago. Let's see, Balaclava Man. Uh, CoinGecko says 9 billion circulating supply, and CoinMarket says 4 billion circulating. Which one is correct? Do you happen to know that one? Which one is correct? Uh, generally, um, CoinGecko is more correct than CoinMarketCap, but... I've noticed that, too. Yeah, I don't know. We'll try to we'll try to get you guys an answer. You know, at the end of the day, we, we're not know it alls. You know, what I mean, like we're still learning a lot of things too, and we'll get you that answer. But um, maybe on the next show or um, somebody from the community, if they know for sure, we'll have to we'll have to find that out. Um, you know, obviously we're going to continue to talk about that. I guess we'll have to remember that one, right? All right. Uh, let's read this from Minilogwar because Minilogwar does a great job of breaking down the whole thing with these banks, especially when it comes to Jasmine and so on. So I do want to read this. Shout out to Minilogwar. He says, Mizuho and Tomasek partnership with BlackRock. BlackRock and SoftBank invested in Clarify AI for SDG and ESG. What um, is feeding that data into Aladdin? I remember doing that. Yeah, I forgot about that. I did a big outline in regards to that. I was talking about especially uh, Aladdin uh, talking about like the connections with um, we were talking about quant. I think that was a that was a, one of the biggest deep dives I ever done. And now I'm glad Minamago are pointing this out. He said now Tim Draper is the person on his ra radar for the rabbit hole. <laughs> good, good to have another person in the uh, in the hole in the rabbit hole on Tim Draper. Let's go. Yeah, if you don't know Minamago, he's on X. Um, really great researcher. Um, and it's glad that you know have them get into that. So right on. Hey, speaking of other crypto content creators, right? Shout out to Crypto Future ninety nine. He says, "Let's go." He gave you a shout out on his show earlier today, which was cool. Oh, awesome, man! I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you very much, brother. Appreciate it. Yes, you know, no one knew it was your birthday earlier, so I guess that was a <laughs> a, a pre fire on the birthday, right? You right. Know, call, call of Duty back in the day. You got a pre fire around the corner to compensate for your leg because the person with the zero ping is going to immediately see you before you see them. And that's just how it works. But anyway, why are you talking about that, Max? Are you salty? No, I'm not salty, but anyway. All right. Um, Corey B-Bay's in the house. He says, let's go. Cool. Welcome, Corey B-Bay, a.k.a. Just read up the scam. Let's go. Cool. All right. X marks the spot, says, okay, I got to ask the elephant in the room a question. What do you guys see Swift coin blow off the top? When? I think you, you didn't mean what. You mean when. How about you? When do you kind of think it might happen? Or do you, yeah, you don't well, I, I always reference this point where uh, the BIS says that uh, cryptocurrencies can in, or central banks can invest in crypto come January first, twenty twenty five. Uh, I think that's when we're going to see a lot of cryptos just go bananas. I honestly um, think that that might be the sw the flip of the switches with ISO. Most time yep. too. Yep. A mandate. Is a mandate going live is going live it's just like it, you know it's, it's it's the same goes it's just like um we talk about the quantum financial system okay is that is that super server computer thingy um is it just sitting in the room and it's just collecting dust uh might be right okay is that utility in being in put in motion no so that it but it's live on a system yeah but if it's not put in the motion it's not doing anything that's the right. way I look at all this stuff, you know? Just just think about it, guys. Like, um, I think they're slowly going to convert over to um, cryptocurrency. They can't do it all at once, right? Because that would cause a huge panic. That would that just, just wouldn't work. But as we can see now with BlackRock, Fidelity, and these 11 uh, big American VC firms, they've converted to Bitcoin. <laughs> a lot of cash. And slowly it's happening that other different vcs from other countries are getting in on this just wait until we have like a xrp etf or a solana etf i mean we already know grayscale has a solana trust right and they have a couple other trusts like litecoin uh xlm they have a stellar trust so more and more um companies in uh, um, VCs and governments are going to be converting their money over to cryptocurrency and come 2025 when central banks are doing it I think that's when really um, most of them, most of the general public will really take notice then man well said Drew I mean you know that's why I look at it too 
Uh, Crypto Future says, my man Boomer, what's up? Yes, Mr. Boomer, F and Sooner is in the his house. William, welcome back. Man, William, you rock, man. You know, um, thank you for being here. You've been constantly, you know, been a regular. So you are officially part of the fam. Um, actually, you have been for a while, but anyway. All right, let's go further down, read a few more comments. Uh, this is a good one. This is from one of your homeboys, uh, G. Go ahead. I found the Twitter post about Draper Venture having Swift C and uh, Telegram on their investment portfolio. Like that's what I'm saying, guys. Like you already saw from the uh, article that Max posted, uh, Draper was invested in Tesla, SpaceX, Twitter, Robinhood. Um, what else did we miss? Coinbase. Like this is like the best investor ever, and we hear about like separate people that have done stuff like that like kathy wood and whatnot right you but never we, hear much about tim draper but we right? never hear about tim draper bro it it makes no sense right it makes no sense if if a guy was initially invested in coinbase twitter um tesla spacex we should hear about him all the time yeah i agree there's there's a reason behind that, right? So it, it, again, back to what you were saying in regards to Swift Coin. You know, how people are saying that like Swift Coin is the best kept secret in crypto. Maybe it's one of them, one of a few. I'm not gonna say it's 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 the only one, right? I mean, let's just be honest. But um, so if Swift Coin is the best kept secret, and then you have Tim Draper, who all apparently is also a kept a secret, then it's like okay, I, I can kind of see this common exactly. thing here, right? You know, anyway, um. All right, let's read another one from G. Uh, they e even have a signing ceremony posted on Swift Coin Twitter. I didn't know that. Do you know that? I did not know that. G, thanks for the information, brother. Pretty awesome. Thank you, G. And let's see here. Um, Josh, you could watch some of her videos in regards to some of that. Swift and XRP simulator. Swift is the old tech. Just put it in a quick nutshell. You know, the MT messaging system um and you know what they're yeah they do cross-board payments and obviously you know nations use it but it's just it's kind of like uh and this is a great analogy right so atari right one of the first game systems birthed out of the 1970s it's kind of like saying you know rue and i right it's his birthday hey bro you want to come on over well it's my birthday well okay i got some cool games you do max yeah man I got some really cool Frogger on my Atari. Now, there's nothing wrong with Frogger, is there not? I mean, Frogger's kind of fun. But who is right. not thinking about gaming it up on a 1970s Atari? Right. He's thinking about, like, I thought you have some modern stuff, you know? I thought we're going to, you know, be going into a game room and I'm going to be on your, you know, like an RTX, you know, uh 4070 or something or 4080 and right. you know, get all this ray tracing and then you know or who knows uh we'll play some battlefield later and you got like a a vr headset or something like that and you know that's what i was envisioning max not 1970s technology okay apply that to freaking blockchain that's swift in a nutshell and with xrp and some of these other ones tied to iso 222 your stellars your quants and so on um you know it's recognizing that that is more efficient so the messaging model with iso i can't get into a deep dive about it right now because i talked to oh my god i've done so much about that but um josh understand that you know you're wanting to learn that's awesome understand that when we talk about these big events like you know flip of the switch it's the coins tied into the isos and you know if you want to learn more about that just do a simple google search type in like iso 222 or the iso standards there's a lot to be, you know, learning in that regard. As far as quant, I cover quant quite a bit, stellar. Um, all these videos are in the video catalog for this channel, and they're not time sensitive because it's deep dive research. You're more than welcome to check it out. Guys, welcome Josh and any newcomers you see. Let's give a two, shout out to- Two, two oh, things I want to point out about that too. Um, mind you, today we're talking about Swift SF or SWFT. Um, Swift coin is different than the Swift payment system and, um, mentioning the Swift payment system. I know the narrative has always been like crypto is going to replace Swift where really, if you look at all of like the companies and the people behind this, um, like Tim Draper, like IBM, 
like uh, Visa with like Solana, right? Um, and IBM with various different companies like Stellar, like the old system, the people behind the old system are actually behind the new system. <laughs> so it's not it's not really a replacement. And when you think about it, it's not really going to replace them. It's going to kind of plug. It's not against them, I should say. It's not like, OK, we crypto versus the old system. Because when you look at that logically, right, you're like, okay, the old system has always been around. It's not going to replace the old system. We can't, you know, there's too much power behind it. But when you actually look at it as all the people that are behind the old system are actually putting this in place to be the better, faster, bigger, stronger replacement for the old system, it, it changes the game completely in, in, in mindset. Because, you know, like all the, all the strong people that were behind the old system are behind this new system. Just just want to point that out. Great analogy. Great way of looking at it. Um, LeGrand commissions in the house. Shout out to LeGrand. Oui, oui. LeGrand commission. <laughs> it's important to mention that since we are talking about Jasmine, the Bitcoin of Japan, Cardano ADA is the nickname, the Ethereum of Japan. Interesting. That's how... Ada, really crazy way of putting it, but huh? Never thought about it from that perspective. I do hold a lot of Cardano, and uh, hmm. I never knew that Ada was the the Ethereum of Japan. Um, that, that's a new one to me because I knew that um, XRP uh, was really related to SBI of Japan. Um, I never knew that Cardano had a place in Japan. I, I, I have to I have to do some more research on that. Yeah. All right. We're going to go through a few more comments. Let's welcome Bullish Island Hopper, Swift Coin Baby, packing my bags. Um, is that one of your buddies? Uh, no, but he did ask me if I was going to do a live with one of my guys that we were talking about uh, earlier, uh, MYC. Yeah, we're still going to do that, but that's probably going to be next week. Okay. Um, all right. So going further down, I think a super chat came through. So we definitely want to get to that real quick. Um, so let's go further, further down. And it's from Bullish Island Hopper with a $2 super chat. Hey, thanks, man. We really do appreciate the support. Um, and so let's actually read this. Um, custom crypto. So which is better, Swift Cash or Swift Coin? <laughs> I'll really, I don't think Swift Cash has any um, any connection to Swift Coin. I know uh, another one of my viewers got this mix, mixed up before. They were trying to go buy Swift Coin and they saw Swift Cash. Uh, I, I don't think there's any connection there. Yeah, I don't so, yeah. think so either. I mean, I don't think it's like a case of kind of like you know, like Bitcoin. You have you know Bitcoin Cash and you have you know Bitcoin yeah. Gold and you know you have BTC and you have BSV and. Be, you know bitcoin abc which is now called ecash and god it's just it's hard to keep up with it all right uh we'll read one more since you know you dropped a super chat uh swift coin shx um that one gfi real world assets all right thank you so much Ooh, one connection there one connection there um, okay, i was so checking sorry. out my guy uh underdog crypto's channel he he says he's going to bring out this uh billionaire um uh billionaire plan and one of the uh, faces he showed in connection to Swift was Bill Ackman. So I'm really, really, I want to see what he's going to drop on that whenever he drops it. But um, um, the reason I say that is GFI, Ackman is an investor in GFI. So pretty interesting, pretty interesting. That is interesting. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to get back to this. Um, I want to share a little bit more in regards to this. So hold on a sec. There's about, let's see, one, two, three, four. Well, that part's five. Yeah, there's five. And then the bonus segment is in regards to XRP. Yeah, you guys, I know. There's a big news about XRP. We'll get to do that in the end. So, shout out to Sideline Reporter, Elon Muff, Mike Cornwall, right? All right, so we're going to do now is pull up the branding back up. Um, this would be kind of, I guess you could say, like the part three. And let's skip back into the rest of this. So before we had a little break and get into the comments and so on, um, 
we had this whole part and let's go ahead and highlight that all right so back to Ms. uh mizuho okay so i'm gonna full screen this back to what we we're kind of talk about so yes it was a big deal in regards to the whole thing of you know um what was it three hundred thousand stores right um but i like this part about even though the big financial institution has partnered with 60 organizations, it is still miles away when compared to Lion's existing user base of 79 million. Why am I pointing out Lion? Because we know about that connection in the past, especially when it comes to Lion and Jasmine. I mean, might as well throw that in there. It's worth pointing out. You're more than welcome to take a look into the deep dive about that. But like it says, furthermore, Lion Pay, if you guys weren't already aware of it, already supported at nearly 1.3 uh you know 1.30 million stores so Ooh. again this is just another example of how you get could possibly get to some of these kpi targets now i'm not saying that we get exactly at the 1787 like the jasmine management team has pointed out but it's so interesting how they literally have it at that specific you know target i understand people most majority of people are probably going to take profits at a dollar that is a given but again, when we point out some of these other things, maybe you don't have to necessarily dump your whole bag. You know, this is why people do the whole thing of like moonshot bags and stuff like that. Um, getting into a tad bit more about this, I like this statement too. Therefore, in order to push the JCoin Pay project forward, Mizuho entered into a partnership with Alibaba's Alipay to increase adoption rate. I love all these statements. Mizuho intends to charge vendors highly competitive transaction fees when compared to the charges levied by credit card companies. Credit card companies usually charge between 2% and 5% transaction. Look at this part. Japanese company unveiled its cryptocurrency plans because just in case people think Mizuho never had any plans. This is why we're sharing this. And that was, of course, back in tw uh, December 2018. Likewise, in January 2018, Mitsub uh, Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, another Japanese banking behemoth, the fifth largest, by the way, announced plans to introduce a stablecoin, which would be pegged to the yen. So again, everything you see further pounds home the whole notion of why we put so much emphasis on these, these stable coins and the pairings. And then this statement about MUFG, I've done... I think I've done a few things about this with Mental Logwar, but the point is the company, if you're wondering, had a lot of intention to launch a blockchain back payment system in partnership with Akamai, a U.S. content delivery provider. And of course, that happened back in 2020. Now, this is now straight from a medium. And now the reason I want to point this out as well is because back to the whole thing of what rue had rue was pounding home the whole thing of swift coin um especially when it comes to tim draper and it's just basically pounding at home more about venture capital over and over and over in those firms and you better believe when it comes to tim draper he's at the forefront of this so look at all these constant references just in case you're on your couch like boomer f and sooner let's blow this up so you see the innovation partners team shares size on capital um again back to mizuho mizuho innovation so there's mizuho bank if you weren't aware of it and then a mizuho innovation mizuho innovation is obviously paying attention to everything that's going on in blockchain dlt and so on right it simply makes sense as you get into a little bit more about this let's jump down to this part because I was talking about Innovation Frontier, you see what is mentioned in regards to this business alliance agreement, um, you know, capital business alliance agreement. Talks about the whole thing of this thing totaling 2.5 billion in yen. Talks about, for example, the shareholders, the third party allotment of new shares to be subscribed by Mizuho Innovation Frontier. And again, that was back in February, 2022. Let's get down to the bottom part of this. Let me get to that for a second. Hold on. Daiwai Securities, Rakuten Securities, Rakuten Payments, and Mizuho Bank, right? All of these ones. Progmat. Good God. 
There's your little Easter egg, even though it's not Easter. Progmat and Jasmine. Remember all the research we did about that? So look at this, guys. They announced their cooperation in issuing Japan's first public offering security token bond that will pay interest fully in electronic money. Aha. Ooh. What do we know about Jasmine when it comes to monetization? So, guys, I mean, this is... Oh, my God. So, again, back to the whole thing of SwiftCoin. And the common connection is what? It's... I can't even pronounce the, play, the bank anymore. Bazooka? So, yeah. Why, why can't... It's just so many darn terms sometimes. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So, in conclusion, before we kick it into the very, very last segment, that is the icing on the cake plus a video, because you guys are probably getting tired of hearing just me talk and so on. Um, while public knowledge will basically state that there is no information to confirm, obviously, SwiftCoin and Jasmine, we just connected the dots for you guys. Okay. And how they're both backed by Mizuho Financial Group. They are backed by them when you understand the common thing of venture capital. And, you know, and then for all the people who are like, Mizuho never invested into blockchain technology and digital assets. I showed you research all the way back to 2018, did I not? And yep. also, yeah, Rue showed you a ton of research. So that confirms it. There is no, nothing speculative about that. But it is significant to understand these things. So SwiftCoin, Jasmine. Some people will say, well, big deal. It is a big deal. Why is it a big deal? I always mention these things, guys. Maybe get used to it, right? Three main key things. So backing by a common financial group like Mizuho, for instance, could indicate a potential strategic partnership to a sense of SwiftCoin and the likes of like Jasmine, for instance. You have to keep in mind that collaboration on projects, joint marketing initiatives, and even co-investment opportunities could very well happen. We've seen it with Tim Draper. So that is a thing. What about the whole thing of like, could it spawn credibility and trust from this whole thing? My answer is yes. The backing of large and established financial institutions like Mizuho could very well lend credibility and trust to both, of course, SwiftCoin and even Jasmine, but especially if they're relatively new ventures. In the case of Jasmine, we are seeing it like get more of a trusted name because, let's face it, it's in the top 100. Can SwiftCoin also get into that? Yeah, just needs more of that adoption. But some people point out it's being suppressed. Why is it being suppressed? Again, stay tuned for that because we're going to get more into that nitty-gritty as we keep doing these collaborations, myself and Rue and other people, Underdog Crypto or, you know, um, Shook and, and so on, right? But if you understand the concept of new ventures and understand that in Japan you have the whole case of, you know, uh, this initiative that existed since 2015 with Shinzo Abe about investing into new startups then you really understand where we're at right now i do feel as though it's beneficial in attracting new customers partners and so on and we've already seen this snowball and mitsuho is just one example right there's sumatuma or sumatomi i can't ever pronounce it right again minamagua and i are going to get more into that what about access to resources isn't that the whole point yes mitsuho financial group could very well provide swift coin Right. And even Jasmine with access to valuable resources such as financial capital, industry experience or expertise and a global network of contacts. How so? Your plug in your connect is Tim Draper for crying out loud. Common ground through venture capital. It's really there. Really established that tonight. You have to keep in mind that this is going to help both projects accelerate their growth and development. Hence why we reference some of these connections. Mizuho is just the tip of the iceberg. So here's some examples that I want you guys to follow tonight before we get to the very last thing, okay? On how we can see, you know, these two big conglomerates work together potentially through common ground of things like Mizuho, okay? Without even having confirmation from either Jasmine and SwiftCoin, because in reality that probably will never happen. But again, it's the common you know the ones that like the subsidiaries if you will or the other banks that work with both or the venture capitals involved whether it's tim draper and so on so you have to keep in mind maybe it sounds unpopular but like security token offerings okay 
So SwiftCoin as a security token platform in itself could potentially help Jasmine tokenize its assets and conduct like, for example, STO. That could happen in the future. I'm not saying it is, but it could allow Jasmine to raise capital, of course, to a wider pool of investors. If SwiftCoin is the XRP of Japan, well, then you already have an idea of some of those investors. And last we chalk, or last we saw, when it comes to Jasmine and even SwiftCoin, they do have common ground when it comes to Hong Kong, right? Big time. Data sharing. Back to the whole subject of Jasmine real quick. So Jasmine, as we know, focuses on data security and monetization. Literally two minutes ago, we just talked about that example of monetization. And if you think about it, a collaboration with SwiftCoin, even not on the surface, could help develop solutions for secure data sharing within the security token ecosystem. I know some of that stuff sounds scary, but keep in mind, different area of the world when it comes to the whole topic of security tokens. What about compliance? As we know, Jasmine is at the forefront of being compliant because they already did that from the beginning, hence why they got the title of Bitcoin in Japan. It means the first. In regards to SwiftCoin, SwiftCoin, in regards to compliance, could leverage its experience, or I should say their expertise, in security token compliance to help Jasmine ensure that its data monetization practices comply with relevant regulations. But it really does. But what about taking it to the next level like Hong Kong and some other areas outside of Japan? Very, very true. SwiftCoin could very well be the plug to make that happen on more of a, a global scale, especially for Southeast Asia. Now, I understand some of these are hypothetical examples, but the point I want to get to is what you see here from Cointelegraph. I got to get this on the share, and I promise I'll give you some 2024 news instead of you know 2018 and 19 and so on. And, so and before you go into that, Max, I want to yeah. point out one thing that people um, understand too. What we got pretenses that are going on here, where um, China can't necessarily like Draper can't necessarily say um, relate things from China to Japan because there's the there's the whole BRICS versus G7 thing. So we might never get like the full like complete total like open co cooperation right we have to see it it'll, it'll always probably be do indirect because of that just wanted to point that out right and like we also point out you know even with the research i mean it's not just me it's other guys who point out like panasonic that was such a spec like people are like oh it's such speculation but we connected the dots with that a long time ago and then now you finally see that you know they got the green light from panasonic to mention yep that's confirmed. So do you really always need to have it confirmed? You know, some people say, well, yeah, because that's that's awesome. I mean, great. Okay, I get that. But you also got to keep in mind it's the timing of the market. Why would they wait all the way till now to, to mention that? Probably because it didn't sound as good in a bear market. I'm just saying now it's a bull run. I mean, it's called strategic. It's part of the strategy, right? What makes sense compared to what doesn't make sense. You know, action, reaction timing of the market um but yeah let's get into this for a second and you made some good points thank you for sharing that um we're gonna full screen this and again we're probably about 80 percent done with this i know this is a lot of material to get into but it's it's good stuff and you know i don't typically do shows on fridays anymore so you know we used to call these like friday surprise well yeah surprise here, here we are so back in october 2023 it says from coin telegraph by the way japanese yen backed digital currency dcjpy remember how we just referenced them to go live in july 2024 ah i see where max is going with that yeah yeah because this pounds home all the research we've done for a couple years now digital currency and electronic payment business the current holdings intends to launch the coin in july 2024 uh-huh so this is a great example of when we talk about pairings you know, it's like, this is a Japanese yen backed digital currency. You know, people are talking about, you know, JP, uh, JPY, right? This is a uh, DC JPY. Okay. So it gets more into this. It says on October 12th, digital currency electronic payments firm D current holdings published that white paper on its cryptocurrency project, DC JPY organization tends to launch that of course, 2024. 
Um, but it mentions this whole thing about the network, how it consists of the financial zone and business zones. Why is everything tied into Jasmine innovation zone, monitoring zone, financial zone, business zone? You get where I'm going, guys. The former will include banks mining deposits and as digital currency on the blockchain, while the latter will be reserved for transactions. Business zone will also provide space for issuing non-fungible security and governance tokens. Guys, these are utility-based NFTs for crying out loud, if you really think about it, right? So that's interesting. Um, getting more into this, and I'm not going to get into the whole thing. It says leading issuer DCJPY, which will be backed by deposits in Japanese yen, will be the uh, Azora Bank commercially, you know, entity with 19 domestic branches. Again, this is great examples um, in Japan. So 19 domestic branches. Let's take a pause on this for a second. This is yet another example of understanding pairings. So if you have 19 domestic branches, you know, and it's just a no-brainer. You know, when we put a lot of emphasis on, like, you know, uh, SwiftCoin, right? You know, you can purchase SwiftCoin on Coinbase. And you can literally use a pairing of the U.S. dollar. Okay? But to have 19 branches, especially when it comes to Japan, is going to further pound home, like, well, if we're going into this new era, Society 5.0 and so on, and the government has literally mentioned... This whole thing of, okay, we need personal data lockers and so on. Okay, Web3 requires your data to be secured, but you have the option in Japan and other places, Hong Kong and so on, where that is supply and demand. That's like one of the best examples of utility I can think of, you know, is these pairings. I don't know. Maybe people get worn out with this. Me mention this. I, I'm just looking at it from perspective. It's high volume. That should be your takeaway. Am I too far off on that? High volume, right? If Tether is high volume and, and Circle is high volume, this is internalized in Japan. So it, it's not just like, oh, hey, we're unbanning Circle, right, Rue? And, and just, you know, uh, you come to Japan, you're going to visit Japan. Here, here, Here's Circle. No, you're enabling the people of Japan to pair this up and incentivizing them to use a personal data locker because it benefits the local society and you get kickbacks as far as like, hey, you want to get rewarded in points, like hence the DD token. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking to everybody's heads off tonight. I don't know. But anyway. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, that sounds yeah. great. And especially, um, I know you said that Jasmine seems like it's a national project um so it only um it only uh feeds more into this that um if they make this um that it'll be like a national thing it'll be in everything so um yeah especially considering um the, the size of these different companies we're talking about like mitsubishi um oh yeah um um mizuho um, all these different guys. Um, and I know I saw in one of the other articles, Nomura was there. So it's, this is, this is worldwide guys. Like it, it really, but, but when you look at these, it's like Japan, Japan wide. Yeah. I mean, you know, this other statement, um, let me full screen this. Cause I know people like it to be zoomed in, um, it goes on to mention that, you know, um, the current reported about a consortium of seven. 70 Japanese companies that would participate in that network. So again, this is another example of, oh my gosh, it's like a snowball effect. You know, we mentioned all examples of pairings. Then you have 70 Japanese companies that are going to participate in the network. And I, of course, I could click on this link and that opens up another rabbit hole and we'll be here all night. I don't want to do that. But the point is recognizing some of this stuff. Um, the white paper doesn't mention any specific names on the network participants. Okay, so I didn't need to click on that. But the current itself is backed by 35 shareholding companies. Well, as we know, when we talk about shareholding companies, back to the whole example of SwiftCoin, Tim Draper, shareholders with that. So I think that panels at home even that much more. Um, hold on a second. Let's get into this next part. Uh, what's this other part? Yeah, meeting takes place in Tokyo, won't be screened online. Oh, gee, I wonder why. Maybe because they don't want to leak out <laughs> the info about right. 
non-disclosure agreement. But back in May 2023, Bank of Japan released the results of the second phase of its central bank digital currency experiment. It will make a final decision issuing a digital yen by when? 2026. I mean, this is... Mm, all the freaking research... All points for Japan for 2026. The rest of the world, their their heads spinning. They they don't get it. Understand their fourth. Like when we talk about the lockup, right? Our fourth quarter is not their fourth quarter. You know, maybe our bull run, not necessarily is the same type of bull run for them. So these targets of 2026, it's like why always 2026? And I think if anything, this kind of pounds at home. Why 2026? So should we be patient in 2026? I'm not going to give you guys financial advice. I'm just providing you guys information in that regard. And, you know, I think it's all worth pointing out. Um, I know I keep saying there's more, but there really is, right? So, uh, you know, look at this, guys. Meanwhile, Binance, Mitsubishi, UFJ Trust, and Banking Corporation are exploring the issuance of Japanese yen and other foreign currency denominated stable coins in the country. Who's been pounding that home for a freaking year or two? Not just me, other people. Okay, this is why this is so important to understand these particular things. And if anything, I'm going to take it to this next part, um, but we're going to take a pause on that. So this next part is from Reuters. Okay, and then we're also going to do a little video. I think it was from somebody from the community, believe it or not. And then the last, yeah, so it's, it's literally 90% done. But before we end that segment, I got to give you two cents. Uh... Yeah, a little fun cents. thing on that picture, if you could bring that back. I don't oh, know why they... Uh, um, oh, hold on. Uh, Let me bring it back for you. Okay, hold on. Yeah? I don't know what this has to do with uh, Kakashi Sensei. If you uh, scroll up to the uh, picture they should, they had in the, the, the beginning of this article, uh, Naruto uh, might have some bones to pick with them. But I'm having a Kakashi Sensei in the middle of their picture there. But that's oh. pretty funny. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but go know. ahead. Sorry. No, nah, that's all good. Um, we're gonna just take a like a quick little brief moment, read some comments. Um, you guys rock, man. 405 here tonight. Uh 351 on X, 54 on YouTube. Um, let's read some comments. Uh, let's see here. Bullish Island Hopper says, any videos on CEO Ramble Ian? Uh, um, I, I wrote back to his comment. Uh, Underdog, when he mentioned the uh, billionaire uh, investor mindset, uh, one of the six pictures he, he listed besides Ackman was uh, Ramble Land, who is the CEO of um, Swift. So so Ramble Land is, the, uh, uh, is Swift CEO. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Um, let's welcome Baza underscore NL. Uh, he says 4.23 early morning here. Good morning, all. I wonder, oh, the Netherlands. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Josh Corbin, I didn't think of that. Jasmine is a need for Web3, yes. Um, and then I'll let you answer this because you're always talking about Tim Draper. You want to read that? Yes. Uh, how did Tim Draper invest in Swift on Coinbase? Uh, so Tim Draper is an initial investor Uh in coinbase and he also is an investor in swift and not not with the i s w f t um if you go to swift's website which we went to already here um they will tell you that draper dragons are their investor um and draper dragons is swim uh tim draper's chinese investment arm great question though uh, josh do appreciate the the questions and comments all right um, I know that you, you know, I said, you know, we go about two, two and a half. I mean, it's two thirty four. We're almost done, Bruce. So thank you. Okay. No um, problem. And just to clarify, that. just a little bit more. So just so you guys know, uh, Draper is an initial investor investor in Coinbase and Coinbase listed Swift, um, which Draper it through the Draper dragons owns. So two different companies, which he owns. <laughs> in collaboration there because that's how how uh how loaded this guy is right yeah he's definitely loaded that's for sure all right so what we're gonna do now is gonna pull this up um regards to the the last bit this is from reuters um if you guys want the citation i'm gonna go ahead and drop it in the comments here it is 
I mean, there's some I drop and some I don't, but, you know, sorry about that. It's in the comments. One of the benefits of watching them live. And, yeah, let's go ahead and full screen this. So, again, once again, you know, from Reuters, Japan firms to issue digital currency for clean energy transaction. Interesting. <laughs> nice. Right. So why are we pointing this out? I think you understand that. Oh, yeah. You, this further solidifies your research, e does it not? Yeah, here it is. ESG again, coming up right here. Yeah, this pounds on everything that Rue was mentioning at the beginning of the outline. That's why you point this out. So uh, full screening this. And yeah, Japan firms, I remember that, my bad, uh, for clean energy transaction. This was not long ago. This is only technically speaking a few months ago. I mean, like, was that six months ago? Something like that. Um, but here we go. It says here, you know, a group of Japanese firms will issue a digital currency by July 2024. We just mentioned that from the other one. Uh, for their transaction settlement, clean energy certificates, uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Again, back. that's why I show you the whole thing of Decurrent. Okay? Um, and again, pounds on the whole thing of DC, DCJPY. And it goes on to mention that DCJPY intended to be used as telecommunication firm internet initiative for the settlement of clean energy certificates, which is signed. Yeah, I know. Environmental value to energy procured from non-fossil fuel sources. Now, if you're just tuned in and you're like, I don't get where these guys are coming from. Um, this makes no sense to me. Um, again, understand this. So we're going to share. <laughs> Here it is. Look at this. What does that say, guys? November 28, 2023. Mizuho back again. Nice. Climate Impact X, Joint Forces, Scale International Carbon Credit Market in Asia. Okay. Venture Capital side, Jasmine, right? VC firms. And then what's the other thing we know? Back to Rue's research. Let's jump back to this again. Swift team planning to prepare creation of uh, this for a long time. We already got to that part. Sorry about that. Um, but again, look at this about Mizuho, right? Yeah, Mizuho. Um, let me get to this other part real quick. All right. Yeah, Mizuho and some of the things that were li listed here. Hold on a second. What was the other one? Um, oh, yeah, this part about venture capital firms. I think this part, yeah, literally mentions Tim Draper. Yeah, back to this ESG. Boom. Tim Draper. Think about it, guys. FinTech, China. You know, I, I just kind of kind of do a little review with you guys, right? To just show some of that. ESG, how's it playing in investor choice, right? So it's all there if you look more into it. Um, what was this other one? Oh, this one is from the LinkedIn. My bad. Um, how many times do we see it listed here? Look at this for a second. There it is. Carbon neutrality by 2050. Decarbonization. Support decarbonization, industry restructuring, um, Japan, <laughs> Mizuho Bank, decarbonization. <laughs> More about decarbonization. I mean, again, you could go back to it. B boom, Mizuho Bank, Mizuho Bank, freaking. <laughs> That's huge. Now you, just, now you're gonna oh. have me down a uh, rabbit hole of Draper and decarbonization. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. That, that, that's it. I mean, I mean, some people say I thought you you had a lot more than that. Well, yeah, I mean, um, you know, but the point is, I hate these things sometimes coming up like that. But clean energy certificates, guys, ESG. The common factor is the patents, especially when it comes to Tadashi Morita. Um, sorry, I'm gonna full screen this just a little bit more. I, I know it seems like I just keep pounding home more, but it, again, it, I'm trying to have people understand that there's nothing to really want to skip here. Okay, look at this. Decurrent says it improves security by using banks, existing know your customer, and aligning measures alongside a traceable blockchain ledger and distinguishes it from stable coins, cryptocurrencies whose values are typically pegged to fiat currencies. So again, this is working with everything that we talked about when it comes to um, this concept of what Jasmine's trying to do. Cashless business entities also can be truly digital by using this. Um, 
a nervous cost savings for all investors. And basically, it, it's like it says, launch in alignment with Japan, other countries that have seen an increase in the number of digital currencies backed by bank deposits and blockchain tech. All right, so look, before we get, you know, the last bit of two cents from myself, Rue, and so on, I want to give a shout out to this guy. I could have sworn I seen this guy in the comments. His name is Mark Reddick. I, I recognize that face. Um, he's done, he's had 12 subscribers and he did a video back in December. It says, Jasmine, the dawn of a new era, the DCJPY digital yen initiative. Um, this, this is big. All right. He, I think this is his own words. This is not from, you know, there's a little bit of like AI in the video and that's fine. I need to read this. I want to get credit where credit's due. I, I, I swear I've seen this guy because obviously he's talking about Jasmine. So remember how we just mentioned you know, DP, DC, JPY, and that, you know, that whole connection. Um, we, we mentioned some of the, the common ground with, you know, Swift, um, you know, carbon, um, you know, not just carbon credits, but this whole thing of, you know, going carbon green, if you will. So this groundbreaking video dives into the world of digital currency, explores the pivotal role of Jasmine in the launch of DC, JPY, Digital Yen Initiative. And it goes on to all these these other financial groups um goes down to this part about the spotlight about jasmine being a leader in this innovation um dc jpy positions itself as the backbone of this ambi uh, ambitious endeavor you know when we point out the whole thing about you know pairings is understanding like what is it the stable coin like tether circle and so on you know some people don't want to hear that that those are also the backbone because they create the highest amount of volume that's the point, okay? So this initiative, like it says, underscores the significance of the DCJPY initiative and as a herald of new financial era. Jasmine isn't just part of a revolutionary change. They're leading it, potentially ushering in a world where digital currencies powered by Jasmine's innovative blockchain tech become the norm. Yeah. Why is it the norm? Let's give you a video finally. And then, if anything, get Rue's thoughts and wrap this sucker up. Thank you guys for being here on the Good Friday. Here we go. Jasmine and the dawn of a new era, the DCJPY Digital Yen Initiative. In an unprecedented move that could redefine the financial landscape, a consortium of over 70 Japanese firms, including powerhouses like Mitsubishi, UFJ Financial Group, Rakuten, NTT, and academic giants like Keio and Tokyo University have announced the formation of a digital yen named DCJPY. This bold step towards a blockchain-backed currency is not just a leap into the future of money. It's a testament to the growing trust in decentralized technologies. Enter Jasmine. As a company at the forefront of blockchain innovation, specializing in security and confidentiality, Jasmine is perfectly poised to become the backbone of this revolutionary venture. The DCJPY is designed to tokenize existing bank deposits, creating a fluid and secure digital asset that can be transferred seamlessly across a blockchain network. With Jasmine's patented technology, the consortium has a golden opportunity to leverage a platform that prioritizes data sovereignty and user privacy. For Jasmine, the implications of this collaboration are immense. It's not merely a partnership, it's a clarion call to the industry that Jasmine's blockchain is ready for the big league. By providing the infrastructure for the DCJPY, Jasmine stands to become synonymous with financial security and efficiency. The potential growth trajectory for Jasmine in the wake of the DCJPY initiative cannot be overstated. As the digital yen gains traction, so too does the visibility and credibility of Jasmine's technology. This is a moment for Jasmine to shine, to demonstrate the robustness and scalability of its blockchain solutions. Moreover, the DCJPY project is a significant indicator of blockchain's potential to transform traditional banking. It's a sign that the world is ready to embrace the security, transparency, and efficiency that blockchain promises. And with Jasmine at the helm, the future looks secure and bright. In conclusion, as the DCJPY initiative takes flight, it's clear that we're on the cusp of a new financial era. With the perfect blend of technological expertise and strategic partnerships, Jasmine is not just participating in this change, it's leading it. This could be the start of something huge, a world where digital currencies are the norm, powered by Jasmine's pioneering blockchain technology. That was nice. That it was, was really nice. It? That really summed it up for me. Like, 
Yeah. The the potential of Jasmine just being like kind of like the home blockchain for the digital um yen. Like <laughs> that makes a dollar Jasmine just seem like like small. <laughs> it does. It it totally does. I mean, and it also for me it's like when we call it the Bitcoin in Japan, I, I get it. You know, they're like, how is it the, you know, especially people from like BSV and I, I'm a BSV guy. I mean, you know, and, and they, they kind of laugh at it because it's like, uh, it's built on Ethereum. You guys got to understand. That's why we pound the whole, whole thing of like the pairings. It's like Bitcoin is paired with every freaking thing. Tether is paired with everything and circles paired. I mean, you had, th- what was it? 3,200 pages on Tether with pairings. Yeah. I mean, we've been here forever. So when I see little hints of this, you know, like 17 banks in Japan, you know, that was just one example. And then, and then that video, everything that was mentioned, you know, being like the standard for some of this stuff. Well, then I'm like, oh, my God, maybe it really is going to be the Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin in Japan. But if anything, not really Bitcoin, because it's a lot faster than that and has a lot more use case. I look at BTC as being like just, you know, the most expensive meme coin. But I get it. It, it does have value. But. I know, I know it's hard when people say Bitcoin of Japan, when you look at Jasmine's uh, tokenomics, like how can you, how can it be the Bitcoin of Japan? But when you look at it as a national project of Japan and then, oh, okay. Now it's for, for me, like, okay, now I can understand it's the Bitcoin of Japan because it's a, na- and it's a national project. It's going to be used everywhere for Japan. Okay. It's the Bitcoin of Japan. And um, another thing to kind of compare this to is um, I don't know if you guys are up on Justin Sun and everything and the things that are going on with Tron, but Tron's basically it has a pairing for the digital yuan. Okay, so look at Tron's market cap and where Tron is. Right, um, it's hard to see it because it has like a, a, a ton of coins, but um, you know Tron's like one of the leading uh, DeFi coins around. Right. And it's, you know, top what? Top 10, top 15 um, in market cap? I'll check on that one. Yeah, I know it's still up there. I mean, I have BTT. I have Wink Coin. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I'm still kind of hodling those, right? Anyway. Um, yeah, rank 16th. Um, so, so then imagine now putting Jasmine there being it, having it being the lead blockchain for like uh, the digital yen. Like <laughs> that's 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 like way beyond a dollar, uh, a Jasmine. You know, not financial advice or anything, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes, makes me want to go buy some more. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, guys, before we wrap it up, uh, there's a few more comments, and then we have um an XRP, just a little brief segment. I'm not gonna keep you too long, Rick, because I know it's your birthday. Um, but uh. I think there's a question, right? So let's see here. Uh, we already answered this one from Josh. You want to follow Tim Draper? I believe he's on X, isn't he not? I think he oh, is. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah he yeah. is. Yeah, just type he's in Tim X. Draper. Make sure you're following the real one, right? You, you might have a blue check mark or something, which, you know, that's how you confirm that. Um, let's see. Josh Corbin says, "Is you can read this. Uh, is Tim Draper recently into China or Japan? He's he always been interested in that world. Um, to me, it seems he's always been interested in that world because if you look at uh, the Draper Dragons, their initial investors in VeChain, um, IOTEX, and uh, they've been invested in Swift all the way back in like, I think it was like 2017. So it goes back at least until there, right? And 2017 is what? How long ago? <laughs> uh, nearly seven, seven years, seven years ago. Well, I mean, this year's not over yet. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Right. And then if you go all the way back and you realize that he was an initial investor in Coinbase, that was what? Um uh 2015? 2014? He's a, smart, he's a smart guy that realizes innovation. That's the bottom line everybody should have from this. You know? Yeah. So, VC firms are not trying to bet on like a losing horse, right? They're always trying to bet on the winners. And it's funny because if you go back he said like in 2015 or 2017 that Bitcoin would be 250k by this like this year or something like that. It's like 
why have I never heard of this? Why has no one told me that he said this? And, and, and you hear all these things about Michael Saylor and everybody, right? Like, why did I not know this? Why was this not news? So um, I didn't know I didn't know about Tim Draper until recently. So, you know, I'm learning. Um, but I, I do think he's extremely interesting. Let's read another one. You, you know, you might as well read that. That's about Draper. Uh, Draper Dragons and Draper Associates, big time VC, super bullish on Swift Coin. Yes, they are big time. Like I and we went over it over it on the show. You guys definitely check out that show. Definitely check out the show that I I, I made. Uh, Draper, uh, Tim Draper, uh, Crypto Silent King. We go over a lot of these connections. A lot of um, the companies that are related to Draper Dragons and Draper Associates. It's insane, bro. It's it's insane that that Tim Draper is not talked about every day. It, it is. It's insane. Yeah, I would agree. Um, there's a super chat came through. It's from the one and only Elon Muff. Shout out to Dip Metaverse. You like it when I say that, apparently. Um, Two dollar super chat for Elon Muff. Taggy at Yield Stablecoin. Are are you? Could you stick around just for a bit to find out what that's yeah. about? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Brew. Thanks for sticking around, man. On your no birthday. problem, bro. Pound yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. Um. All right. So let's pull this up. So we got a couple things, obviously, from Elon Muff. Um, so we got one, let's do this taggy because that's, you know, three minutes ago. Okay. Oh boy. Uh Oh, okay. I, th I know who this guy is. This is going to be, uh, the, the, you know, the lumen man himself, the, the Ricola man himself, uh, halls, the halls NFT of crypto. That's okay. All right. All right. Stop talking about it like that. Right. I, um, I, for the record, I think he has amazing content when he focuses and just does like he's recorded videos. I'll watch that all day long. But the live show, I don't want to sit through 20 minutes of this guy stroking his ego. Okay. Could we all agree on that? All right. But as far as like his deep dive content, probably one of the best there is in the space. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and share this. Um, here we go. Shout out to the one and only Crypto Hulk. That has to be Hulk, right? If it ain't Hulk, I don't know who it is. Um, let's go ahead and share this. Maybe it's not Check Hulk. this video it out. It is Hulk. Okay. Yeah. All right um yeah shout out to crypto hulk i doubt i ever get a shout out from him but that's okay um hulk we love you don't don't shoot us anyway um let's go ahead and play this <laughs> here we go check this video out you got anders and horowitz massive tech investment company okay they came up with the stable coin to it's and it's going to go against circle and tether why because it gives you interest this is amazing like a yield bearing stable coin. We're going to get into this, man. Look out, Tether. Look out, Circle. This is Crypto Hulk live stream, 6 30 a.m. Pacific on YouTube. You guys notice something here? You know, this is why we, okay, that was about Ripple XRP, right? Just, and I want to get your two cents. This, oh my God, this pounds home that much more the whole thing of the rest of the world is catching up. Japan has already been at the forefront. I mentioned this last year. I said, people asked, Max, which one do you think, if you had to choose, would be the first to do significant pumps during the bull run? And it was Jasmine. Because it's where they're positioned. They embraced all this. We in the United States are still playing catch-up. And that's not a bash on XRP. I love XRP. Right? But that's just that's just a reality. You know? And now you see these things like you know, a yield stable coin to pay out what? Like a form of monetization. It's just like that should make you that much more bullish on Jasmine, right? Right. And I and I I I say this. I I would say we, we need to stop saying this go against thing. Um if you look at Andreessen Horowitz, uh besides like Draper's portfolio is definitely bigger than his, but his is probably like maybe the second biggest in crypto. Um, but I don't think it will go against. I will think it would just be his version of a stable coin. So, um, you know, so so that, again, that's just more bullish for crypto um, that we have uh, him having his own version of stable coin. And, 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 and back in the day, this was tried like kind of a little bit like Henry Ford trying to try to come out with his own version of a dollar that he paid his employees. But, you know. The, you know, people stroke that down. But uh, in today's world, it seems like it's happening. 
um, PayPal were was allowed to have their own version of USDC, right? So it seems like this is something that is happening today. So Tim Draper is all about a dollar. Who the hell is 50 cent? <laughs> exactly. Who the hell is the injuries in Horowitz to Tim Draper, right? <laughs> I throw that in there, right? A lot of hip hop tonight, right? Anyway, having fun, good, good stuff, right? Um, we're going to get to Mike's other thing that he had shared earlier. Cause I mean, some of you guys want to know about it. Uh, I'll read this. Um, Josh says, that's awesome. Does it make sense to invest in VeChain and Swift together? Um, I, I can't give like, fi- we, we're not financial advisors. So you have to make your own choice there. But um, definitely, I know that Draper is invested in VeChain. He's also invested in Swift. He's invested in Oasis. He's invested in a few. Um, but yeah, I know uh, VeChain has always been touted as like China's kind of first crypto. But He's invested in a few over there, um, Quantum or Qtum, or I don't know how, how they say their name, but it's Q-T-U-M. Um, I, I think that, that one's briefly. Yeah, and that one's like, I think it is a fork of Bitcoin, but the guy who's the CEO of that graduated from Draper, Draper University. <laughs> so this guy that that's what i'm saying like like draper well connected. Has like unbelievable. so many yeah. connections bro it's, it's 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 insane yeah that is insane uh that reminds me of something else in regards to hip-hop about connections hold on how's it go got connections get that stuck like glue another thing of biggie smalls right anyway all right, Yipay says Josh Corbin uh, is in Draper Dragon portfolio. Uh, this is stuff I don't know about. Yes. Um, on his website, looks like a Japan Visa or PayPal. Oh, interesting. He likes the movement of money. Love the example you just made, Josh, in regards to Japan. You want to elaborate? That is a great point. I didn't know Yipay was Japanese, but if you look at all of his portfolio, it all comes back to payment. A lot of it comes back to payment. Uh, so I'm really, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And again, remember, uh, the Draper Dragons, uh, their logo is a red shield, okay? <laughs> yeah. who, who do we know that, that the Rothschilds, right? That that name means red shield. Does oh, and mean- back, yeah, back to what you were saying just now, our first outline of you and I together about SwiftCoin, you show, or you show the research from Under, Underdog Research Channel, shout out to Underdog, uh, showed all that right all those connections and you did a little bit of the wikipedia and then showing like um certain you know raw childs and so on and um and then it, what was the other one skull and bones and it's just crazy yes. stuff like wow this rabbit hole is just endless but it's it's all there all verifiable crazy stuff yeah so i'm glad i'm glad you mentioned yipay there and he's he's connected to a, a ton of different payment cryptos if you look at the draper um Associates portfolio, uh, Wire is his company. The uh, W W W Y R E. He's a he's the he owns Wire. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, I don't want to get more. And, that, and Bit know... Fill, Bit Refill is his too. Yeah, because um, what is it? Wire, I think, was built on Stellar. There's a different one. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong one um uh that's a different rabbit hole for another day now you got me intrigued on that so let me uh i'm gonna pull that up right quick i'm gonna pull up the draper associates portfolio because it's insane when you look at it guys like and this is this is just tim draper okay all right like i don't know what they say his net worth is but (laughs) I, i mean I don't. I don't know what they say. It I, is, I looked this up. I, I did. Look, I looked this up the other day, actually. Uh, J- Tim Draper net worth. Um, hold on. We'll share this real quick for everybody to see it. I know we're kind of going, you know, extended again hours. So there it is, guys. Two two billion according to twenty twenty four report. Yeah, right, bro. <laughs> yeah, right, bro. Okay. You think it's more than that? It's it's way more than that. That's well, just... you know, they're based on the calendar. You know, this year's not over. I, I, I... Maybe it's his personal worth and not his company's worth. Uh, I get what you're saying. Kind of like, you know, if you really think about it, I mean, like Vladimir Putin may very well be the richest man in the world, right? 
that type of yeah, concept. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure they're they're like uh, like the kids say, stop the cap, there, guys. It's his his individual companies may be worth way more than that, so he probably is worth more than that. But that's probably his personal worth and not his all of his companies. But let me let me uh, stop this one and share this one. I get what you're saying. It's kind of like um, the Saudi royal family. You know, when they hear that, you know, things like, you know, Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. And they're just like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, OK, nice meeting you, Mr. American or whatever, you know, like. But it's like individuals in that family, they're, they're, the family itself is like trillion dollars or more, you know. Anyway. Exactly. Like, who yeah. knows, like, like all the different Rothschilds, like individually, yeah. unless there were, but like together. Oh, God. Oh, geez. Oh, you're going to like this. Hey, yeah, let's let's share this whenever you're ready. Yeah, I got it on the screen. Uh, okay, on the full screen. There you go. Okay, so this is Draper Associates portfolio. Okay, guys, um, I think we just mentioned Aladdin. Is this the same Aladdin? That's the same Aladdin. That that symbol is with BlackRock, as we know. So there Black we go. Aladdin, there we go. Right AI, there. BlackRock. Yeah, we. Uh, if you guys want to see that, uh, I think I teamed up with Menelogwar for that one. It, it was a quant video ties in all this stuff but that's interesting that you see you have that so draper is associates with aladdin menelagor if you're watching this there's another rabbit hole for you to go through i know you like doing that here we go bancor is his baidu is his bit refill that's one of the like a lot of people use bit refill in there um so you get bitcoin back for um using their gift cards But then if we go down here, of course, we got Ledger there. This is this huge. It's this huge of a list. So Yipay, which um, uh, I forget who the commenter was that mentioned Yipay. It was Josh Corbin. Uh, okay. This guy right here is just mentioned. See on the screen. So okay. Yipay is in Draper Dragon portfolio on his website. Looks like a Japan Visa or PayPal. He likes the movement of money. Then he yes, goes he on does. to mention this comment, which we didn't read. Let's read this also. Hey, Josh, by the way, we hope to see more of you, right? Thanks for all the good comments. He says, Draper has got to have a stellar research team and consultants. I mean, he must, bro. I mean, and here we go. You see here a uh, wire. And that's one of the big payment systems around. Okay. So... And and then if you think about too that this guy is an initial investor in uh um Tesla, Elon has connections to um um PayPal. Um I think they have connections to um uh what's the other one? Stripe via um Peter Thiel. Like we 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 really like we really can't even say how 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 big this guy's uh how big his reach is because if he owns part of Tesla does he does that mean he also own like he might be helping Elon out there with um PayPal or any of those other ones who who knows how well, deep it goes the, the thing is you know the, the was it the report from Tuesday about the big announcement from Hara jasmine panasonic and then you know the other research we did last night was panasonic in the united states and then it was like the common factor was supplying with cell batteries right for tesla vehicles for panasonic and you know when you want to talk about esg and all this stuff like dc microgrid technology right and tied into internet of things and it was just like so when you mentioned what you just showed right like on this thing earlier right um with tesla so <laughs> you know again back to the whole thing at esg so th again this all comes full circle you know and when we chop this up i'll i'll include this as well because i think that really you know for all the people that tuned in last night um again add tesla to the, to the mix because it's common ground um, it's, it's ESG. It's, he's, you know, Tim Draper and associates, their VCs and so on. See the value, obviously. 
Um, which who doesn't see the value when it comes to Tesla for crying out loud, you know? Yeah, this guy just he is so much, and there's so many payment cryptos here that like Uno Coin is apparently like a, a, a Indian exchange, but remember, he's also connected to Coin DCX. And <laughs> like there's so many uh payment connections that is it's it's just insane to think about. So it, man, like I, I can't I can't show enough with, with this guy. But let me look here at Yipay. I didn't know that they were um Asian. Uh oh, where did I let me go back there? Okay, I'll take a look at it. You guys won't see it. Here. All right, so how about this? Um, do you need like a couple minutes on that? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll I'll just I'll open it up right, and maybe so you can look at some that, more comments. Yeah. yeah, no, no, what I was gonna do is um, we're at the bottom of well, the comments, but I I wanted it says. Uh, did do you see still see? Are you still sharing? Uh, let me re-add it. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. It does say East Asia right here. So even before we even open up the the website, it does say East Asia. Interesting. Well, you know what? Maybe we can get into that for the next particular one we do. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, let's let's do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, for some of the stuff that was mentioned before, trying to confirm, what was it? Uh, Coin Gecko report of the supply for Swift Coin, and then also let's do the. You know, I don't know if you got some notes on that, but um, either way, well, that's easy to remember. So those two things. Um, yep. Yeah. Yep. So good stuff from Josh, and let's go ahead and remove this for a second. We're going to get into this report before we wrap up the show because, I mean, you know, we're, we kind of went over three hours and didn't really want to do that. Um, but, yeah, it's all right. So let's go ahead and pull this up. This comes from the one and only sideline reporter, Mr. Elon Muff, Mike Cornwell. And let's just go ahead and pull this up again. This is bonus content. Um, this is uh, the, you know, unofficial XRP segment, right? Um, so we're going to get into that. And uh, yeah, might as well also put up the branding for X. All right, so make sure you give me a follow all the way over there above Rue's head at DPG Maximus. Brother Rue can also be followed at Black Rue. And let's get into this report. Big report in regards to uh, what's going on with XRP, right? So Mike Cornwell, our sideline reporter for community, uh, has this. And what exactly is this all about? Well, let's get into it. So it says settlement. Is this the real deal? Is this the real McCoy? Well, if anything, we'll have to find out a little bit more information. But, you know, it could be the real citation. I don't know. I haven't been able to fact check this. But it's interesting. A lot of you guys in the comments have been mentioning this. So if anything, um, this is from a guy named Gwardy. He mentions the SEC is asking for $1.95 billion to be paid within 30 days of proposed final judgment, which would be uh, on, you know, April 25th, 2024. Uh, of course, according to the Gregorian calendar, I know he's citing that. Um, the settlement conference began at 3.10 p.m. Eastern, and this, of course, was reported today as in March 29th. What is this all about? Well, um, you see on the screen, hopefully that's big enough. Uh, I think it is, yes. So it says, it's hereby further ordered a judge and decree that defendant is liable for disgorgement of $876,308,712 representing net profits gained as a result of this violations of Section 5 of the Securities Act as found in the court's summary judgment order. Um, before we get more into this, I was going to state this, okay? Um, I remember doing a piece about this uh, back in the days when Crypto Smith, uh, you know, used to be active in crypto and covering stuff. So shout out to, you know, Sean the Crypto Smith. But he was mentioning that he sees eventually, you know, some kind of, um, you know, settlement. Ripple pays a fee. And it could be a, you know, a billion, two billion. So in, if anything, I actually, I agree with Sean. I, I think this is way less than uh what a lot of people thought and um is ripple really gonna sweat over it not really you know i mean it sucks they have to pay a fine i get that but i just thought i'd throw that out there um getting more into this because i want to read it it goes on to mention that you know this is pursuant to section 20 
D of the Securities Act, right? You know, that particular citation. And here's the highlight. Defendant shall satisfy this obligation by paying one billion nine hundred fifty uh one billion, you know, so sorry, one billion nine hundred fifty million seven hundred sixty eight thousand three hundred sixty four to the Securities and Exchange Commission within thirty days after entry of this final judgment. So, okay, I guess I was somewhat right in that regard. Um, so, you know, he said it was going to be around two billion. There is right around two billion. Uh, Rue. <laughs> yeah, and I thoughts? wonder, like, <clears throat> I think this is, I think this might shake a lot of people out of XRP. Which is what the government will, or let me, let me, let me be coded. I think this is what powers that be would want for people to sell their XRP. Um, for a normal person just looking at that, that might be a lot of money and that might scare them into selling their XRP, um, which will just make it easier for the government to scoop it up. But I mean, just just think of like if if we were to think XRP could move money around the world again, like um, and and, and that one XRP could one day be uh, worth, say, ten k again, like fifty fifty two cents or whatever is that right now? Sixty two cents is very a uh, very small amount of money. Um, but still, I mean, I'm sure they're they're trying to like shake out as many people as they possibly can, right? Max, I think you're muted if you're talking. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, even like on that report, right? Thirty four billion, you know, still a market cap. Um, still in the top ten. I mean, I understand that, you know, the market could wake up tomorrow and XRP tanks. I guess I get that, you know, um, but, you know, I'll just point out some of this stuff, right? You know, it's like, um, does it suck that they, they have to pay this? Yeah, but, I mean, shoot, man, they, 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 you know, they're here to stay, in my opinion, and I understand that, you know, it's a difference of opinions. Yeah, I definitely think they're here to stay, and... Um... Knowing that, um, and I've shown this to my people before, that a Rothschild owns 8.7% of XRP tokens. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my main thing. It's just, you know, forget the whole, you know, retail narrative and opinions. It's like, just follow the big money. You know, yeah. that's all yeah. you really, really need to do. When we talk about doing more of your own research, if somebody said, you got to, you know, where is the real big money, institutional money? Boom. Right. Like what you said, Rothschilds. You think they want to lose? No, they don't want to lose on anything. They've been betting on all this stuff for years. Yeah, it seems like 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 someone saying in the chat there, it seems like gamesmanship to me. Like it's all part of the game. I guess it's, it's a big it's a big uh, game right there. <laughs> it seems like to me. Yeah. Um, Let's just read this last bit of comments. Um before we wrap this up, let me take off the XRP. But yeah, thank you to Mike Cornwell for sharing that. We do appreciate it, uh, Mike Cornwell. And, you know, AKA Elon Moff, right? What a name. Um, let's see. I love that name. Yeah, everybody that loves that name. Josh Corbin, thank you. Awesome work here, Max and Rue. Thanks, man. We hope to see more of you, Josh. We hope that you become a regular. Um, J H F J H F K F. Gosh, I'm just going to call you JH from now on. Um, Maximus, I emailed you the other account that reached out to me that was missing the I in the Twitter handle. Oh, God. Uh, be careful of scam accounts. There's always some with the same page as Max. Reach out. You know, I've been reporting those guys. X needs to get with it. Um, yeah, that's sad. So, sorry that that's happening. Just a disclaimer, right? Above Rue's head. Um, at DPG Maximus, just like how it sounds, M A X I M U S, and it has a blue check mark on it, right? Um, which means I'm a verified account. All the accounts, those are fake accounts, all right? So, you know, I was warned about this in the future. People used to tell me, you know, you've made it, Max, as a content creator when people make fake accounts. Well, yep. okay, I mean, I don't like the idea <laughs> that, that that's happening. I don't want nobody to get scammed out of anything. I mean, you know, I joke around and say, just be scammed, you know, it's just re referencing. 
you know, the flutters, because they would always say that. But in reality, there's some scams. Be careful about that. Again, the only one to follow, and I'll just show you real quick my, my own example, okay? Since we're on the subject of it. Um, so here's me. I know I could get a better picture, but shout out to LeGrand Commission for helping me out with this. Um, so this is it right here. Let's full screen this. And, um, yeah, I mean, look what it says, you know? Um, let's highlight this. At DPG Maximus. And notice I had the blue... Well, technically, it's a white check mark with blue around it, but everybody calls it the blue check mark, right? This is my one and only account, and that's it. All right, there's there's nothing else out there. There might be other people with maybe more followers. It doesn't matter. Just go with the blue check mark, DPG Maximus, just like it sounds. And there's no two eyes or, you know, this is it. All right, just kind of like what you see on on here on the stream. Okay, um, above Rue's head. That's the real account, the one and only. But I do appreciate you reporting that. Um, JH says, agreed, follow the big money. That's also how to study real major events in history, especially the family you mentioned. Thank you very much. Um, just read a last bit of comments. Ever Vincent, he watches you. He told me he watches you. He says he only watches like three of us, like me, you, and I think 2-Bit, right? So Appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Edward, for being here um l Wright senior hey welcome back he's a great video thank you both um sean a or i get some corium i would agree with that you know i mean yeah i like corium too you know sologenic and corium go together like peas and carrots right i know it sounds boring <laughs> but um jhf he thanks mike cornwell and this is from rue what up edward and everybody all right, you're very, very welcome. Um, let's give Rue one last plug just in case, because I mean, we have, we, we should do this. This is a perfect time to do it, Rue. Okay. Yes, so, indeed. guys, just give, give me a heads up. We thank you so much for weathering the whole distance of the show. Three hours and 17 minutes coming up on. Um, just give you the report, Rue, if you're wondering what the, the head count is. We're up to a total of 458 combined Ooh. on the live show. So, if anything, I mean, hopefully that gives you some followers. You said it last time around when you hooked up. Uh, it definitely helped you with your channel. So oh, yeah. I like hearing that, you know, that, that, that makes me very happy. And just to give everybody spill the beans on this, um, Brew, I didn't know it was your birthday until today. Okay. Um, but this is my happy birthday present to you as a content creator. Okay. So you guys know me, I usually chop stuff up and I put stuff here. Last time around, I chopped some things up. I was trying to introduce SwiftCoin to our community. That already has been done. And I gave Rue another part that was chopped up and so on, and which was showing me this time around, I'm chopping up this whole thing of everything we did tonight. Jasmine, the SwiftCoin, all that, editing it, spruce it up, where you want to call it, with a nice intro, thumbnail. And I'm gifting the whole thing to you to put over on your platform where we can help you grow as Thank my you, own sir. birthday present if you want to call it that you're very welcome you more than deserve it and that's the least i can do okay i want to see you grow because you're an awesome content creator people will let me know rue that uh they're like hey i like rue he, he kind of matches your style max when it comes to the deep dive research so um Guys, always get used to Rue. We will give you more updates in regards to SwiftCoin. Um, just to also give you a heads up. We can't necessarily do it every week with Rue, but Rue was saying that because, uh, you know, he does shows, you know, on his platform as well. But it's, uh, I think we, we say like every other week was what yes. we're shooting for. Okay. Yep. Yeah, very cool. Um, so here's his platform. And hold on a second. Let me, let me just pull that up. Uh, I keep trying to get the right one on here. Yes, let's start with your YouTube. Um, here's Rue's YouTube. And he can be followed over at Black Roo. Um, you can just type in at Black Roo on YouTube or just type in Black Roo as in B-L-A-C-K-R-U-E and this will come up. Um, and like you see right here nine days ago, you know, Swift Coin. You said that you got some decent subs from that, which is super cool. Um you know, let's help Rue, you know, scale up from here to like maybe thousands of views and so on. He does have a live show. Uh, you want to reiterate that real quick for the community? Yeah, I have live shows on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time and Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so, yeah, definitely um, come on over. I'm going to start clipping up my shows because I know people say like the three hours is too long or whatever. 
So I'm going to start clipping my shows here coming up soon and uh, making my schedule straight so I can do that. So I appreciate all you guys and I appreciate you guys from coming over. Um, I definitely had some people come over like I have my subscribers up more than 100. So I see that you guys are watching and I see that the Maximus Crypto uh, community appreciates me. Um, just much love to you guys. I very much appreciate you guys. And I hope I earn even more of you guys to come over. Um, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You're more than welcome, more than well deserved. Um, now we're also going to share, of course, his ex because you know he's trying to build a following on there as well. I mean, can you blame him? I mean, for crying out loud, you guys on X are unbelievable. I mean, right? 405 on X, 46 on YouTube. When Elon Musk says that X is going to be uh, his goal is to make it the, the all in one app. Uh, boom, there you go. Even from a social media presence, I mean, clearly more people on X, but always join us over on YouTube, the OGs, and, and mingle with your fellow community part participants. All right, here he is on X. Um, let's go ahead and full screen this as well. And yeah, you know, at Black Rue, just like myself, he does have the blue check mark. Very cool. And so, you know, in the future, just if anybody was like, hey, there's a fake one. Well, this is the real one, right? Um, anything you want to comment in regards to your presence on X or anything you want to. Yeah, us? we're really trying to grow the X um, and hopefully one day <laughs> be monetized on there. So please come over there and join as well uh, at Black Rue. Um, well, I'll probably do something to add like. The crypto root podcast because it lets people know that i am doing crypto and it's not just my name um but yeah uh please uh come over there guys and add me as well i plan on doing more posts over there um now just to inform people and give them info so um the best the best places to get info from me uh, will be there and um on my channel and on my telegram and if you go to any of my videos, you'll see my telegram. Uh, we have an open telegram for now. Um, so come on over there um, and, and join. Um, it'll be in the link in the description of any of my uh, videos. All right. Sounds good. So, um, you know, Rube, I just want to state this. Don't leave just yet if you don't mind. If I can just talk to you for like sure, no a quick five minutes or something before the show ends. Guys, thanks again. Uh, this guy, JH, says, you know, he appreciates us. All right. You guys rock. Everybody that tuned in tonight, have a great rest of your good Friday. Um, and, uh, you know, it's possible that I won't see you on Sunday. Maybe it's possible that I will be here. I don't know for sure. I will be back with you guys, not here uh, necessarily tomorrow on this platform, but I just want to make an announcement. I will be with... A crypto roundtable of Jasmine, like ambassadors and so on. So it's Jesse KIR Finance. It's Rob Crypto Future 99. Uh, there's a couple other guys. I apologize for not knowing which ones those are. I have to get some clarification. But it's going to be at 1 p.m. Central. So what is that? 2, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it's going to be over on Crypto Future 99's platform. And, of course, before we go live with that, I'll send out a tweet at least maybe, I don't know, half an hour, an hour, let you guys know about it. So I won't be having a live show tomorrow here. Uh, if you love the shows and so on, it's going to be early tomorrow over there. Okay. Um, on behalf of myself, Rue, and everybody else, can't thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I should say, Rue, you had the last word. Happy birthday. Thanks so much, guys, for having me. The uh, Maximus Crypto community is always so welcoming. And like I said, you guys came over to my channel. That means a, a ton to me. You, I, I can't say enough for that. Um, you know, and I'm happy to be doing shows with Max every two weeks. Man, it's such a fun time on here with Max. We laugh, we have fun, and we give information to you guys. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. So um, thank you guys again for having me. Um, look forward to seeing you guys every two weeks and I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys on my channel. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Make sure you stick around. All right. We're going to end this yep. thing. Have a great night. Uh, any other comments? Sorry guys. We just got to really wrap it up. Um, but I do appreciate you. 
Again, have a good night, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.